And in accordance with the open meeting law, the board states for the record this meeting is being recorded by NORCAM and may be recorded by other local media. We're also being, I believe, recorded by Zoom. I'm going to uh, activate it right now, Madam Chair. By Zoom by the town. The would like you to unmute your microphone. You can press star six to unmute. Okay. And if you could please you rise for the, for the Pledge of Allegiance. I pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the republic for which it stands, one nation, under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. Um, Welcome everyone. You'll see uh, Mr. Studo is not with us because he happily has welcomed the birth of his a new daughter. So that's why, unusually so, he's not here at the meeting. Otherwise he would be here, but he's probably trying to get a little shut eye and <laughs> having fun with the new baby. So we congratulate him and we will move on to the first order of business, which is public comment. Is anyone here that wishes to speak in public comment? If you if you do, please come to the podium and please state your name. In, if you would state your name and address for us, so we can record it and welcome. Thank you. I always feel good to be welcomed. My name is Hugo Weiberg. Uh, been a twenty odd year. Uh, resident of North Reading and I've uh, followed this uh, process uh, with great interest. Um, let me see if I have uh, my own thoughts uh, written down so I don't have to stutter too much. Um, but basically, um, I am somebody who uh, was originally a butter for the uh, original permutation of the uh, rail trail and um, I was thinking um, and continue to follow the process and and I think that's my role is uh, that I've continued to follow the process and I don't believe I've made any public comment on uh, the rail trail plus or minus um, but uh, when I joined uh, what sounded like an open uh, forum uh, discussion being held on town property at the library, um, I was told that I was deemed to be a uh, somebody who was not in favor of the rail trail. And I don't know why simply showing up to listen to the debate labeled me as somebody who was against the rail trail. And uh, that continues to bother me, and will continue to bother me. And uh, I would like to get to the bottom of why the person that was holding the public forum at the library felt that I was not in favor of the rail trail. And that continues to be a, 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 a as the King and I used to say, it is a puzzlement. And um, every time it comes to my mind, I realize I don't understand it. And I would like to get an answer to why I was deemed an enemy, or not a friend, quote unquote, not a friend, of the rail trail. And um, I will continue to try to understand what was said to this advocate of the rail trail, they gave her that opinion. And if I can't get it uh, through somebody being honest enough to say to me, I gave that information to her, I said that about you, then I am considering, I do have an attorney here in town, and I feel for a small stipend, the person may well be willing to the, the lawyer may well be uh, inclined to uh, ask for depositions as to who is slandering and libeling me personally, as to putting words in my mouth and saying what I had said when I did not say any of that. Okay, thank you for your comments. 
Please join. My name is Deborah Pascal. I'm concerned about the LUC committee. Chapter laws in town 98 1 2 state that a representative of the Conservation Commission should be on that committee. There is none. They've never mentioned it. We don't understand why. How can a committee in town operate when they're not following the town bylaws? I think that's a problem. Thank you. Thank you. Um, I don't know, Mr. Gilberto, if you wanted to have any comment. I, I'm not sure about the, the gentleman who spoke first, but I do, I do recall you did have an email that was looked into. You, you did send us an email, yes. right? And I think based on that, we did look into that, right, Mr. Gilberto? Yes. So. Th through you, Madam Chair, thank you for pointing that out both this evening and in the, in the email. And um, from, from what we see, uh, there, there has been transition in the Conservation Commission over the past three years with uh, a handful of long-term members coming off the commission. Uh, the commission had not designated a successor to its representative on the Net Utilization Committee, uh, and we're asking the Conservation Commission to do so. Um, I would then proceed with making that appointment uh, as is required under the bylaws so that they would have that full complement uh, on the commission. So thank you for bringing that up. I appreciate that, but does that not make everything invalid for what has occurred with them? We have no representation from conservation for a project that is on wetlands and conservation land and all the rest. It's not good. It's not a good situation. Thank you. Madam Chair, through you? Yes. Uh, I, I would agree it's not good to not have a conservation commission member on there, which is why we'll rectify it. Um, the commission's required, the land utilization committee is required to um, have its meetings uh, in open, uh, posted in accordance with the open meeting law with a quorum of its membership present. Uh, and that has been how the, uh, the committee has operated. Um, at least to my knowledge, over the past couple of years. So I, I don't see that their actions or positions would be invalidated because of that, but I do share the concern that we need to make sure we have the Conservation Commission representative on there, uh, and also that the Commission, the Land Utilization Committee, with regard to the project, consult with the Conservation Commission directly, which I know it has committed to do. Mr. O'Leary, I did see your hand up. Did you want to add anything? We yeah, I know no, it's not a liaison on. to the Conservation Commission for the board, and I appreciate your uh, pointing out that they had uh, made the uh, liaison assignment. That's what it is, a liaison assignment. Conservation Commission, like almost every other board committee and commission in, in the community, are, are volunteers. So they would have to get a volunteer on the, of a member of the Conservation Commission to be the representative on the LUC. Because there isn't one member of the LUC appointed or present doesn't negate the actions of the LUC. Again, they open under the open meeting law, they operate, and the quorum present, they can take their votes, whether people show up, don't show up, or whether an appointment has been made or not made. We have a number of vacancies on a number of boards, committees, and commissions, and we welcome everybody to, to volunteer, uh, that still continue to operate because we still have a quorum and we still have enough people to, to sort of meet those quorum requirements. But I appreciate the, uh, the email as soon as I got it, I forwarded it to the administration, uh, reached out to the Conservation Commission and asked them to make the uh, necessary liaison appointment and the appointments will be made. But thank you very much. Thank you, Mr. O'Leary, for, for taking care of that as well. Okay, does anybody else, would anyone else please? Ralph Salard, Park Street, North Reading, been here for 23 years. Um, uh, what I want to talk about is the behavior of a select board member at a previous meeting that was an open invitation held at the public forum of the library. Um, myself, Mr. Delilah, who cannot be here this evening, I think he sent the letter off. Uh, he's unable to be here because he's on vacation with his family. He doesn't have internet access either, he said. Um, the behavior that we're talking about is certainly not representation of what a select board member should be. And I think you folks need to know about it. Um, Mr. Delisle and myself, who we have been boisterous about um, not, not fans of this rail trail, uh, taking of easements through my property, one foot away from my, my pool with my 13-year-old daughter. Same thing with Mr. Delisle's property. Um, Mr. Delisle received an open email invitation from the members of the, um, for the real trail. I went, because it was, in the, it was publicly posted in the newspaper, anybody welcome. Mr. Delisle and myself walked into the meeting 
And Ms. Mr. Walner pointed Mr. Delisle out and said, you, you're not welcome here. You can't be at this meeting. You yell with him. You either can't be here. Get out now. You're not welcome in this meeting. Get out of this room. This is our room. Mr. Delisle proceeded to say, we're here just to listen to find out. And we, we're not against a real trail. We're against the position that they're going with it right now. He said, absolutely not. You're not friends of this real trail. You get out of this room right now. And he ordered us out. So we left the building. It's not the behavior of a select board member, whether he's acting as, a, as an individual. He wasn't the host of the meeting. He didn't post anything. He was not the host. He was a member of that, but he took control of the meeting because he is the host of that meeting. And he, he personally threw us out of a public meeting house. And we said that. You can't do that. This is a public room. This is our meeting. You get out right now. And that's not whether it's... We, we, we all have to behave in a manner, no matter where we are or what we're doing. And that is not the way a select board member of the town of North Reading should be acting at any time. He's not a li li liaison that we're aware of. We don't know that. We weren't aware of that if we were or not. But we were ordered out of a public meeting by a select board member. And you folks need to know about that. And that behavior cannot, cannot be and should not be ever acceptable. I think Mr. Warner, he, he knows his position. He knows what he did. He should resign this evening from, the, from a member of the select board. And it should be accepted by the select board for that behavior. Thank you, for Thank, your, you. Thank you for your comments. Um, I don't know if there's any, I, I think a meeting in a public library is a public meeting and the members of the public, whether they're in favor, against, or just going for information, that I, I think we try to encourage that kind of rolling out things that we're working on or even things that come up that other people are working on that are going to come to us ultimately. And we try to encourage that more of these just public meetings and public dialogue. And I think that the example of what happened with, the, with that, um, just, just speaking for myself, I'm not speaking for my colleagues, but we've had many of you here before on the, the issue of the rail trail going through people's land and lots. and, and you know, that it seemed to be something that wasn't rolled out in a public manner, um, or at least enough, enough information being presented. So I don't think that that was a board-sponsored meeting, but it seems to me like if it was being held in the library, it was likely to be something to generate for, for public to attend. So maybe perhaps in the future, maybe that wasn't understood, and then maybe perhaps in the future that those types of meetings, maybe there, if it's not a private meeting, it, it should be something that everybody can get more information on. I think I saw that posted too on Facebook. Was it the Green, Greenway? Friends of the... Greenway Green, meeting? Yeah. Yes, yeah, and it seemed to me like it was inviting anyone to attend that. Yeah, um, and, then, and that's the troublesome part of this. It, was, it wasn't the host of the, of the meeting yeah. that, that welcomes. It, it was a select board member that took it upon himself <coughs> to throw us out of the meeting. Let's go back to what you just said. It's at the library, but we all know, and when you sign out the library, there's rules and regulations. It's a public forum. There are no private parties there. It's a public forum. As a select board member, he certainly should know. He knows the, the, the open meeting laws and the regulations, and he took it upon himself. It wasn't the host that told us that we couldn't be here. It was Mr. Wong. Okay, I don't, I don't know. I just want to be clear, though, with you. That wasn't an open meeting of, the, of any of the government, uh, you know, town of North Reading, that is. That was a separate group. I agree with what you're saying, because it's a public library. But I, it was a, you know, a, a citizen group running that yes, meeting. Yes, but, but my yeah, issue I is... I understand your issue. I, I understand okay. totally. The select board right. member took it upon himself in, in an authoritarian way to throw us out of the meeting. And that's wrong. We, we, we know what's expected and, and how to behave as, 
That's the white board. Sure, you've been right. here before, yes. And, and we've, yeah. all, we've always followed your rules and regulations, yes, so we respect sure, those, sure. and we try to learn as much as we possibly can. Yes. But to be expelled from a, from a meeting that Mr. Delia was personally invited to, and I was publicly invited to, and to be thrown out by somebody that should know better, that's why we're asking for a resignation. Okay. But at this at this point, you, we hear your public comment. I think is all now publicly understood that a public meeting in a public library, the public would be. It, it seems like they were being invited to attend it anyway. It's an informational meeting, and I I hear what you're saying um, for calling for resignation. That Mr. Walner is an elect person elected by the citizens of North Reading to serve here too so that I we're not going to be able to effectuate a resignation for you this evening and I'll just be quite frank with you about that but we, we appreciate your coming forward for public comment and also pointing that out because I doubt that that would ever happen again so especially if there's a meeting scheduled for the public library okay thank okay, you, thank you. I don't know if there's anything else, Mr. Gilberto. Just very briefly, um, Madam Chair, um, so the library has an activity room policy that requires that the type of meeting that was being held two Thursday nights ago be open to the public. Um, I, I do believe that organizers or parties organizing that meeting may not have known that. Um, we made that clear to them, and I think after you were asked to leave, and I believe you did leave when you were asked to leave, that meeting was also adjourned, and, and they were instructed that they had to have their meeting. So I do want you to know that we enforce the policy through the library trustees who set that policy. And as to the, the meeting being a public meeting, the, the Friends of the Greenway or whatever name it operates under is not an entity of the town of North Reading. It's not sanctioned by the town of North Reading, by myself, by the select board or anybody else. There may be crossover of folks who are involved yeah. um, in it, but you know, to be very clear, uh, it is not an entity of the, public, uh, of the town of North Reading. Just to, just to follow that up, sure. sir, um, when the library, when the head of the librarian came down, she came from her personal house down. She informed the meeting that the people the, the lady hosting the meeting that it has to be a public forum, you cannot throw anybody out. Mm -hmm. And that's when Mr. Warner s stood up and said, Well we'll have it in the parking lot. And she said you can't have it in the parking mm -hmm. lot of private meeting, it's public. And that's when Mr. Warner adjourned the meeting. He said, Well then this meeting's over. We're done. Okay. So that certainly that sounds that uh, let me in, ma'am. Sorry. No. That certainly no. sounds like somebody that's hosting a meeting, not just like you like you said, a, a member of, of the town just sitting in on a open meeting. We've okay. had me different different members, um, Mr. Gonzalez, Mr. Suo, uh, Mr. Roberto. They've all sat in on other meetings, didn't say anything. Mr. Warner, he was running this meeting when he personally took it upon himself, not to host the meeting to throw us all out of that meeting, and then to adjourn the meeting. And you can't do that. You can't sit on a board here that things are things are happening and be running <coughs> inside the meeting also. Okay. Thank you. Okay, thank you. Okay. Um, <coughs> please, sir. Thank you. For those who don't know me, my name is George Furlis, lifelong uh, resident of North Reading. Um, I was the third person into that meeting, uh, shortly behind Mr. Samard, and Mr. Delisle. I was greeted by Mr. Walner, quote unquote, I don't know who you are, but if you're anything like those who get out, correct? Just, sir, we're, Thank you. please, just. So rather than create a scene. We're a not scene. gonna actually have a debate or a dialogue. Fine. We're trying to address the issue that you're raising to us. We have to, to understand us. my disappointment trying to yes, attend please. a public meeting being thrown out. I've never been thrown out of the library. I have an overdue book there for seventh grade. I've never been thrown out. <laughs> um, so I guess my question is, what is Mr. Walner's um, involvement with friends? I have no idea. I didn't have a chance to ask that question at the meeting. Okay. Would you like to answer? Is there anything else that you'd like to? Yeah, I would like to ask the board under what authority did Mr. Walner have to have me removed from the building? I think that I think that the what we've just answered is the policy is a public users of the building, public or private users of the building, the public library 
have to follow the policy and it's, it, members of the public are allowed to attend. Okay, and for the also to Sorry. serve that, that was a, an outside citizens group that wasn't a group of the board that was managing or running that meeting. I understand Mr. Walner was there, but that wasn't anything that the board did or the town did. That was a citizen's group. That and he actually took control of that meeting. And for the record, I have an invitation, personal invitation from my email inviting me there. So back to my question, what authority did this gentleman have to have me removed? I had a personal invitation. I, okay. I don't want to answer that. Okay. And I think we'll, what we understand now is that shouldn't have happened, it did happen, and it should not have happened, and it was, I'm not going to speak for Mr. Walner, but there is a policy in effect at the okay. library, and Mrs. Kelleher came to explain that policy, which is what she should do as the director of the did. library. Yes, yes. Is there anything else? I, I understand I like your concern. The gentleman, but apparently that's not happen. No, I don't. It's not really public comment. Isn't really a d d dialogue back and forth. But we do appreciate your coming forward and, and I speaking. second, as Mr. Smart said, this gentleman to resign from the board. That behavior is unacceptable, and maybe a recall referendum is the way to go. I, I don't know. Just not going to not going to put up with it. Okay. It's not my entire life. They've been thrown out any place, any building. Nevertheless, the library. Okay. All right. Okay. Um, just, is there anyone else? I, I don't know if there's anything you. We don't usually get into a back and forth, and we do have a number of people and a number of issues to address. But just is briefly, it? I can just brief. Mr. Walnut. It, uh, it was. Uh, it, it was um, supposed to be a meeting, a private meeting. It was intended to be a private meeting, and. It was supposed to be a private meeting for friends of the rail trail. And it was very clearly advertised as being friends of the rail trail. Um, when the people walked in, it was my understanding it was supposed to be a private meeting. And I didn't introduce myself as a select board member. I introduced myself as being a private citizen living at 57 Lakeside Boulevard, which I am. I went to attend. When people walked in that I knew who were against it, I did say, this is this is a private meeting. It's not intended for you. You need to leave. I did say that. I absolutely said that because that was in, that's what its intention was. And then I confirmed, it's just a private meeting. And the host said, yes, this is a private meeting. Now, the library, you may not know this, but like the library has Girl Scout meetings there. Is that, it, there is a gray line. And so I, I will, recognize that the gray line I didn't interpret the right way. In fact, the policy is very clear. But I have in my head that I've been I've, I've gone to pick up my granddaughter at the Girl Scout meeting and it's very clear and this is the director of the library who said it, if a creepy guy walks into the Girl Scout meeting, we're calling the police and getting him. So in my mind there is a gray line between private and public. So when when Sharon, when the director came and said that this was, this was in fact, had, you know, this is going to escalate, we need to stop it. We stopped it, and that was the end of it. But oh, do I have the right to be? Do I ever? Oh. Uh, all right. I think we can. Okay. So, but. But it wasn't open, and just to clear. It wasn't an open meeting. It, uh, it was not an open meeting in any way. Okay. It was tended to be private. Once it, I realized that location could not be private, we shut it down, and that was the end of it. Okay. Is there anyone else here that wishes to speak in public comment? Mr. Gilberto, could I'm you just? Say one more thing, if I may. If it was a private meeting, why was it advertised in the newspaper? Why was it on Facebook when it was a welcome to people? Why was it an open meeting just like LUC where everyone can just speak and get the information? Again. Why is that that cat, the person head of that meeting constantly talking about eminent domain? Why is she going to get a lawyer for that already when she doesn't even know all the facts? And why are you backing all of that? Because that is the truth. Thank you. Mr. Gilbert. I have one question, one comment, if I could. Um, again, I have a personal invitation to that meeting. If they didn't want me there, they should have told me, no, you can't come. 
and I take offense to being regarded as the creepy guy in the world. Okay. All right. Folks, all right. So, Mr. Gilberto, is there anyone that's got their hand raised to talk? And then we can, we do have to move on. All set. Is there anyone else that hasn't had the opportunity to speak yet that wishes to speak? Are you all set? Okay. Okay. Thank you, folks. We're going to move on to the next order of business, which is uh, we have our town clerk to join us, Sue Duplin, and she's going to discuss um, the upcoming preliminary election on September 6, 2022. Welcome. Yes, good evening. Thank good you evening. for having me back. So, yes, I'm here to talk about the uh, September 6th primary. Um, you don't have a meeting before the primary, so I'm going to give you all the election information, uh, deadlines, and um, updates on uh, mail and ballots and everything. But first, I just wanted to announce that I'm excited because the town clerk, by law, um, may appoint an assistant town clerk. So a week ago, I appointed Stephanie Connolly, my assistant town clerk, and she um, is driven. She goes above and beyond to follow duty. Um, she's compassionate. Um, she is willing to learn. So this gives her a great opportunity for me to train her. I have 22 years experience. So someday, you know, when I retire, no time soon, but. Um, so I just wanted to make that announcement. And I'm excited for me, excited for her, and I'm excited for the department to have her. Um, it opens up a lot of opportunities for her. And uh, she'll be great and do great. Thank you. Congratulations. PowerPoint. I like to make my PowerPoint short and sweet, simple. So I try to do 10 and get 11. Sorry. <laughs> Susan, we're just going to make sure we share the screen. Oh, yes. So oh. Sorry. the primary September 6th it's a Tuesday so I have a picture of Galvin up there because uh, everybody who is registered to vote by July 8th should have received one of these postcards in the mail it is actually a early mail-in ballot application for the September 6th primary and the November 8th election so on these cards there are deadlines so the deadline to submit these cards the application to us for the primary election is August 29th by 5 o'clock. The office will be open by 5 o'clock. And then, of course, November 1st for the November 8th uh, election. We, so you have the option on these cards to pick either one election or all elections. There's two elections scheduled this year. So um, we, most of the cards that are coming back actually are choosing both elections. We're having a problem with the cards. We probably have a stack like this much for a primary. If you're independent, you must declare a party for a primary. Uh, we have to reach out to these people and ask what ballot they would like for the primary election. November election, everybody gets the same ballot, so that's not an issue. Um, an application, um, you can use any means of an application for a mail-in ballot. It could be a postcard, you can just hand write something. It could be on a napkin if you like, but it has to have obviously your name, your address, and your signature. Okay, so I'm sure everybody's familiar with these. Uh, next. Okay. We are going to have in person only voting. If you do not want to do mail in ballot, or if you don't want to go to the polls on election day, 
We are going to do, we're mandated to do um, in-person early voting. This is statewide, Massachusetts. It has to begin on August 27th and end on September 2nd. So with the new Votes Act, uh, the deadline to register to vote was 20 days before every election. It is now 10 days before every election. So on a Tuesday election, unfortunately, is a Saturday. But we will be there that Saturday anyways for in-person early voting. So um, residents can come in and register to vote if they would like. Um, we will be there, as you see, Monday, 8 to 4. I did regular business hours, and I like to offer a couple of nights. These, by the way, are on the town website. And we are going to be printing out copies uh, in the office to pass out as well. So the late nights are Tuesday and Thursday, 8 to 8. And then Friday, we have to end it. Um, I was going to end it at 1. However, the deadline to apply for an absentee ballot over the counter is by 5 o'clock. So we're going to do in-person early voting until 5 o'clock the last day, September 2nd. It'll be open. Election deadlines. Well, I don't know if he's going to blunt. So I already went over the, uh, so the August 27th is a deadline to register to vote, a change of party affiliation. For a primary, if you're registered in a party, you have to take that party's ballot. If you're independent, you have a choice. Uh, years ago, you used to have to fill out a card to go back to independent. It's automatic now. You automatically go back to independent. Uh, it's the, I already went over the August 29th deadline for early and absentee mail-in requests. You can send the requests, you can drop them in the 24-hour box, you can email them to, to us, you can come in in person and drop them off. Um, there's many means of uh, ways to get the applications to us. If the application is missing something, we are trying to reach out as best as we can, return the application, call via the phone number, any kind of contact information to get the information we need. And when we're there, absentee voting on the counter is by 5 o'clock. These are all state deadlines, 5 o'clock. Um, the last day, September, uh, yes, all ballots must be received by 8 o'clock, the close of the polls on election day. Residents should not bring their ballots down to the polls. They have to come into the office. They have to be recorded and received. So some, some bring them down to the polls, but then they have to come back to us. This is a, so people don't realize what is involved in a mail-in ballot process. So the vote is probably, so the, the slide on the left is what it is now. There's all these steps. Everything is recorded, all staff and the application. So the voter probably has three of these steps that they have to deal with, um, the rest of the office deals with. So the one on the right is how it used to be. The one on the left is how it is now. So people don't realize, and these are time consuming, which is fine, you know, it's our job. But, um, and it's a matter of convenience for the voters, and the voters do love the mail-in or early in-person voting. And this, um, I wish I could take the credit for this, but the, uh, actually, town clerk in Danvers did this just to show her board the process, which I thought was great and, um, to share with you. So here's your ballots. There's two ballots. Sometimes for a primary, a state primary, there could be three ballots or four. Green Rainbow and Libertarian are sometimes offered as a party choice. September 6th primary, we have two ballots, your major parties. So this is a Democrat ballot. And these will be online. This is Republican ballot. So those are your two choices for independent voters. You have your choice of one or the other. <coughs> Not both, obviously. <laughs> ballot drop box. So this is the 24-hour ballot drop box. So we are getting envelopes back. We have a couple. The main thing on these envelopes is they must be signed. We already have a couple back that are not signed. We have to reject the ballot and mail everything back to the voter, send a whole new packet. They must be signed, um, otherwise we'll be reaching out to you. Um, this ballot box will be locked at 8 o'clock at election day. We have until 8 o'clock, as I mentioned, to get the ballots in.
election day. Those people, is uh, diehards, are just wait until election day and go to the polls, which is great. And um, the polling location hasn't changed. It's St. Teresa's. Polling hours are 7 a.m. to 8 p.m. These are some election statistics. So I'm sorry about the font. It didn't seem that light when I was on the PowerPoint. But registered voters, as of today, we have 11,937. Early mail-in ballot requests, 1,283. Absentee requests, 30. Early ballot received, we have 80 back and 6 absentee back. I often direct everybody to Secretary Galvin's website. They have all the information that you need on that website. You can track your ballot. Everything is recorded. So once you drop your ballot off to us, we have um, the date that it was mailed, the date it was received, whether it's accepted, rejected. Everything, uh, you can get applications on this website. You know, if you can't find an application, uh, Secretary Gelman has everything on there, absentee ballot, applications, early mail ballots. Are you registered? You should check your status uh, before the deadline, August 27th, because you cannot change anything after that date. We have until midnight on the 27th, if you do it online, to register your vote, change your party, your address, um, what have you. Uh, Pre-registration, so you can, uh, if you're 16, you can pre-register, and then when you become 18, you automatically um, are registered to vote in 18. You can check your polling location, there's a lot of information on the end that um, pretty much answers all your questions. And this is just the uh, questions, comments. Um, so myself, Stephanie, and Carol are in the office. You can email any of us, our emails, um, the website, Secretary Gallo's website I mentioned, uh, the town website will have all, it has a lot of the information on there already. The in-person early voting schedule, it has the mail-in ballot applications on there, and then our um, direct number. There's many ways to reach out and ask questions. And that's the end of the presentation. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. All right. Questions? questions? Any questions? Mr. O'Leary, all no, set? Just a comment. Comments. Thank goodness we live in Massachusetts. Yes. Thank you for doing a good job, <laughs> and you made an extremely wise choice. Yes. Well done. Thank you. And Thank you. questions from Mrs. Gonzalez? All set. Just congratulations again. Yeah. Thank you. That was great. Thank you. Two questions from me. When you have uh, that uh, 16, when they register to vote, they're pre-registered. Are they automatically enrolled to voters? What's the next step for them when they turn 18? So it goes into another queue. So when they register when they're 16, we have uh, so it's the state, it's uh, voter registration, it's Secretary Gallup's database. So when they register to vote at 16, when you go to the registry, um, you're in that queue, but then when you Turn 18, you automatically go to the regular or registration queue. So we know to register that person. Okay, so anybody that, let's say, learned how to drive in the past couple of years should have received that mail in to ask if they wanted a mail in ballot, right? Yes. Okay. Second thing, inactive voters. Mm -hmm. How do they reactivate their status as a voter? Their signature on their envelope activates them. What if they so in other words, don't do get the, what if they don't, do you send inactive voters that invitation to request a ballot by mail? If, yes, they were registered to vote even though they're inactive, yes. Okay. Secretary Galvin did, yeah. All right. So um, if you're inactive, if you sign a petition paper, if uh, you vote and then um, your signature on your ballot envelope activates you as well. Well, what if someone doesn't want to give you a signature? Can they come into your office or go online and reactivate their status with yeah, you? Yeah, there's a form in the office they have to fill out, prove they still live here, they sign it, you know, the residency, and then that activates them. Okay. Thank the you. census activates um, residents as well. I just have one more comment that people get 
because of vote right you're right and who you vote for is such a private thing that people get a little bit leery about having to sign their name but I don't think people actually understand the massive task it is for your office they're not sitting there looking at who you voted for they're just opening doc documenting the voter came in this voter came in this is a registered voter they're documenting opening to get you know on the day of the election to, to run it through the machine so that would be great it seems like you have a high number of requests for that I don't even know if we had that many in our elections even <laughs> voting so yeah. that seems like the high number of people that want to participate by mail which is great but anybody that's a little nervous about that if you're encouraging that they're not looking at who you're voting for they're looking to see on the sealed envelope who you are to make sure you're registered and then trying to get through the task of day of opening all those to run them through the machine so <laughs> So yeah, we don't open the ballots until that day. The mail and early right. ballots will stay in town hall. I will be voting them. And honestly, I could care less on who voted how. I don't pay attention <laughs> yeah. to that. Just yeah. You open them up, you flip them over. You know what I mean? Yes. So, and yeah. they all go on the machine at the same time. Yep. So, yeah. Uh, so that would be good if more people voted. We always want to try to encourage voting, and that's on our strategic plan, how to figure out how we do this. So I think that that... The, the law allowing this, I think, like Mr. O'Leary said, good good for Massachusetts for bringing this to to be the available way for people. Cause some people are working and just not able to get there that day. So, so good for you too for extending the hours like that to, for people to be able to even early vote too. So thank you. Thank you. Your ballot is safe with us. I can guarantee. Absolutely. You. Yeah. Thank you. No, no doubt. <laughs> All right. Thank you. Madam thank Chair, you. through you there are. Three votes, Madam Town Clerk, that mm -hmm. need to be taken by the board. Right. Yes. There are motions in. Right. All right. So, Mr. Walner. Um, so we're doing election uh, yes. workers, right? Election workers first, yes. Okay. So, Madam Chair, I move drives aside the following option for appointment of election workers for elections held between September 1, 2022 through August 31, 2023. Appoint election officers from the list submitted by the registrars as recommended by the registrars. Second. Motion by Mr. Walner, second by Mr. O'Leary. Any further discussion? All those in favor? Aye. Aye. Uh, Madam Chair, I move to sign the September 6, 2022 state primary motion. Uh, one, excuse me. Second. Motion by Mr. Walner, second by Mr. O'Leary. Any further discussion? All those in favor? Aye. Aye. Uh, Madam Chair, in accordance with Section 72 of Chapter, chapter 54 of the General Laws as amended by Chapter 92 of the Acts of 2022, I move to approve the North Reading Elections Operational Plan dated July 20th, 2022, as a sufficient number of police officers to preserve order and to protect the election officers and supervisors from any interference with their duties and to aid in enforcing the laws relating to elections, and further move to authorize the Chief of Police to assign specific police officers according to scheduling and availability, and further to request the Town Clerk to advise the Chief of Police on the dates and times of elections. Second. Motion by Mr. Walner, second by Mr. O'Leary. Any further discussion? All those in favor? Aye. Aye. Okay, thank you. Thank Madam, you very much. Thank Madam you. Chair, through you, as you know from your experience, I'm sure in another community, there was a change in state statute that required that vote to be taken. Uh, we've approved that or asked the board to approve that as a standing um, approval of a police department policy which reflects the way we've handled safety, uh, public safety officer assignment at elections in the past, um, making sure that we provide a safe and secure environment. It does provide for some flexibility depending upon the projected turnout um, and the town clerk and the police chief will consult with regard to that on an election by election basis. Okay. Thank you, Madam Chair. So only one time we have to vote that, not every We, we every believe we have a policy that it will cover that, uh, right. and if we learn differently, then we'll be back asking again for future approvals. Okay. <laughs> so All we right. don't need a first or second reading. Uh, so we, uh, rather than approve it as a, a, a I'm sorry, so you approved a police department policy, so <laughs> it's not your own policy. Okay. Thank you. Okay, thanks All a right, lot. thank you. All right, the next order of business, and we're joined by Mrs. Hurlbut for our facilities. Yeah, he's, he's witnessing our signatures, right? <laughs> for facilities master plan update.
Doug, you wouldn't see me? <laughs> Green Meadow Drive. That one's working. That's, yeah, that's, that's, that's not for here. That's okay. That's just for home, right? I'm chairman of the uh, facilities master plan uh, for North Reading. Um, and uh, we were formed uh, several years ago by the Board of Selectmen. Unfortunately, COVID struck, and much of the work that we had hoped to have accomplished by now has taken longer. We were looking at a number of municipal buildings to see uh, what their needs were. Should they be repurposed? Did they need to be re renovated? What was, what was the deal? And in addition to that, we were also uh, asked to look at a conceptual design for an intergenerational center. Um, our primary focus at the beginning has been the fire station because this was deemed the building that really needed a lot of help um, if for no other reason than the safety of our firefighters as well as fire safety for the town. And so much of what we've done for the last year has been looking at that. Um, but I will also, uh, Bill Hammer, the lead architect for HKT, the architectural firm that is working with the facilities master plan is here this evening and he's going to give uh, a status report on the master plan and also a more detailed report on where we're at with the fire station renovation. Yeah, sure. Have a seat and just pull the microphone close so you can. I knew you looked familiar. I just couldn't remember why. Uh, my name is Bill Hammer. Uh, Welcome. Thank you. And uh, I'm a principal at HKT Architects. And uh, we have uh, been working with uh, the planning committee. And um, as Abby mentioned, we sort of got waylaid by COVID, like so many other things. Um, but I'm going to give you a, a very, I, I know you've got a lot of stuff to do tonight. I'm trying to do a really relatively quick overview, but if you, know, you can have, if you have a question or something like that, please feel free or you can do it at the end. So right now the master plan status is, is uh, these are the, the uh, buildings that we're looking at with the exception of the fire station, which is on the following slide, and I'll explain why. Um, the inter you know, the intergenerational community centers that we said, that, that is really in the process. It's still in the early stages. And um, that, I think, will pick up steam uh, as we get into the fall. Uh, the Wheeler Barn, really, we can't do anything until we're squared away with where the, uh, the, the um, intergenerational community center winds up. And uh, because they're both going to be sited in the same area. Town Hall, uh, we have, uh, I would say actually Town Hall, Damon Tavern, Third Parish Meeting House, and the fire station. We have had our structural, mechanical uh, engineers come out and assess uh, the condition of uh, each of those buildings. We have written reports from them. We have done uh, an existing architectural, uh, we've updated all the plans of those buildings to determine uh, what, how we would show uh, the kind of work that needs to be done. The town hall is still waiting again to see who is going to stay in the town hall, who will be moving out uh, to the community center. Um, and once that's decided, we can do a lot more uh, on laying out Damon Tavern, um, actually Damon Tavern and the Third Parish Meeting House, we are for the time being assuming it's going to be an office use in both cases. Now whether they're town offices or whether they're leased out to a private individual, uh, that remains to be seen. So uh, we are gearing up on that. Uh, we'll probably uh, start doing some work Ready this month and early September. Um, so, 
let's go to the fire station. The fire station has taken up most of our time. Uh, it is the number one priority. And um, there are a lot of issues, and, and, and you may know all of them, but I'm just going to give you a quick summary. Um, the health and safety conditions are uh, relatively serious. A modern fire station today um, now is very aware of the fact that firefighters, uh, when they are at an event, they are covered in the most toxic materials uh, that result from the fire. And in the old days, uh, and like uh, your fire station, they come into the station, uh, they return to the apparatus bay, they take off their gear, throw it into an extractor, but they, ultimately they, even though their clothes underneath uh, their gear is also affected, uh, they now walk upstairs one flight into the dormitory room and then into the bathroom to shower. And that means they have contaminated that area. So we don't, typically you want to have the hot, we know we have the hot area, which is the apparatus, but we want to move to the cold zone where you basically shower and clean. Um, the apparatus bay is undersized. I'll show you some diagrams on that. Uh, the sleeping quarters are very inadequate. Uh, they're, they're, and you'll see that there, there's really no ability uh, to provide uh, a decent facility for female firefighters. Uh, it's a sort of open dormitory. There's only one bathroom. Um, if, if, if there is a female firefighter, everybody else is going to get out of the bathroom so she can use it. Um, there's inadequate storage, there's uh, inefficient, out-of-date building system. The building is 40 plus years old. Everything is out-of-date, the, the HVAC, the electrical, plumbing, etc. There are a number of building code issues that have to be addressed, and the existing facility is just too small, and, and the town is growing, and it needs for the department. Um, the health and safety, this is, this is also, does it work on this one? Oh, yeah, it does. So this is the diagram showing, explaining what happens. Uh, this is the existing building right now. Uh, you come into the apparatus bay, uh, the extractor is somewhere over here. Uh, actually, it's in the basement, so it's in the basement. So now you have to go in here and go down in the basement. This should be a cold area, cold zone. Uh, and then you go upstairs uh, to the second floor, and you come out this way. You walk, this is the dormitory. You walk through the dormitory into the shower room. Uh, it's, it's not healthy, and, and, and it can be made much better. I'll show you how. Uh, again, I, I'm not going to spend a lot of time on this. They're just the, the apparatus bay is too small for the equipment we have. One of the vehicles is parked uh, over at the uh, wheelbarrow. Wheelbarrow. Yeah, the wheelbarrow. Wheelbarrow. Uh, and uh, it's really tight. You'll notice, uh, can't quite see it here, but when that door is open, you have to be really careful that uh, the, 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 the truck is situated in such a way that it doesn't slam into one of the columns. Uh, this is an area where uh, it's not used for storage because it's, it's, a, it's a, an area where they do maintenance uh, and have parts and it's, it's sort of temporary uh, on this table. Yeah. I do. That's actually where we usually keep our apparatus, a piece of apparatus that we store in the wheeler barn. They were kind enough to make room for us. We fit in uh, that engine there and we moved the fire alarm truck, which is typically stored there to this area. It just happens to be out at the moment. So we were probably using it that day that the picture was taken. <laughs> okay. uh, this, uh, it, these are just some shots of the dormitory. It's, um, it's really a difficult situation. Uh, I mean, you've got, in some cases, you've got double-deckers. Um, there's really 
no privacy. This is an attempt to uh, get some privacy, even covering the windows, because sometimes uh, firefighters, you know, during the day, they come back from the event, and they just want to go and sleep. They're exhausted. Um, you know, locker rooms, there's very little storage. It's, it's, it's uh, not at all what you consider a modern uh, fire station. Uh, storage, again, this is stuff that's in the apparatus bay. Uh, it's very tight. This is storage actually in the bathroom on the second floor. <coughs> Towels and things, things like that. <coughs> um, this is off the apparatus bay. This is, again, just some storage. Uh, as is this. This is, I think that's the medical storage. Um, yeah, so both of those two last pictures are our medical storage for our supplies directly off the apparatus floor. That other picture on the top left on the right hand quadrant rather, is where the only place that we have available to store linens and towels and things that we use every single day. Some of the pictures of the apparatus floor on the left hand side you'll see our gear lockers, those old school lockers that we keep our turnout gear in, stored directly on the apparatus floor. And that gear um, storage system is not ideal because the gear needs to breathe. And in order for it to be able to breathe, it needs to be protected in a separate room so it's not subject to contamination or anything that blows in, as well as diesel dust from the trucks. Even though we do have a climb over that system, there's still, a, there's still an amount of diesel dust that does permeate through the apparatus floor. So this is, <clears throat> on the left, this is the ground floor. Uh, this is the ap existing apparatus bay, which we've explained is pretty tight. Uh, you can't quite see it really well, but this is the boundary of the existing apparatus bay. This is where the doors are uh, for the, the vehicles to enter into the apparatus bay. What we're proposing is extending uh, in the back here, this is the area we're extending uh, in the back, and then in the front, we're adding another 10 feet, which will bring out the apparatus bay flush with the edge of the, the existing building uh, on the right. And um, in this particular case, when you get off, when, when you are finished, uh, now the extractors are located right here. So you can take that gear off, put them in there, and you now walk, this is an addition. This, you walk into, uh, this is the cold zone now. You basically can uh, strip down, uh, take off what you need. Uh, there's a locker, or you can do it in, in a shower room. This is a uh, women's shower room, this is for men. Um, and shower, there are lockers in here where you, uh, you know, keep a clean change of clothes. And then when you are done, you go up this stair to the second floor now. You don't go back into the apparatus bay. And so that gets, that stair takes you up here. And we have moved uh, some of the administrative offices. And a lot of this, by the way, is very preliminary. We've worked with chief stats in trying to determine what but the one thing that um, we uh, also wanted to do, and as the senior staff, is now we have very small private rooms. So you can mix and match men and women firefighters. Uh, they each have their own bathroom, and they can function uh, quite easily. You don't have to have uh, the male firefighters locked out in the only bathroom that's up there. This is a, um, a, a day room with a kitchen. Uh, this is where they eat their meals. Um, this, this whole thing, this whole second floor is going on top of the apparatus bay. This is a section through the building. This is the existing apparatus bay. This is a whole new floor. Now, this 
is the pitched roof that you see today uh, with the dormers. That stays. From a historic point of view, the only thing that changes is moving this wall out to here. Uh, and it would go back to pretty much looking the way the original fire station was, uh, which has a door for each bay. Currently, uh, somebody combined those two center doors into one big unit, which is very impractical. The door is too big. It, it often is breaking down. So uh, the preference is to put it back. Um, I think that is it. Yes, that is it. Uh, happy to answer any questions you have. I mean, I know you have a lot to do with that, so. Thank you. All right, questions. Anybody have any questions? Mr. O'Leary? So the, the only question I have is, um, this is good. This is a facility that's been long neglected and needs uh, needs some protection changes, obviously. Um, but as far as the input from the membership, the firefighters themselves are they, are they actively involved in relation oh, yes. to um, yes. what the proposed layout is, and because uh, I'm sure you know they live there, they do have chief for years. Um, <coughs> they know how the flow will work or not work. So I just wanted to show that. You know, they're active participants. They are actively participating in this. So we have a subcommittee within the department with a representative of <coughs> each one of the four working groups. So they are participating in this. Great. And I would add, they've had some good input. I, that's what I'm saying. They're living with the facility 24-7. Right. Uh, yeah, I would not entertain uh, a project of the scope and magnitude without getting input from, from the staff. In fact, there was a meeting a few weeks ago, and um, the architect was there, as well as um, Chief Stats' team of, of uh, firefighting personnel that are part of this uh, study group to look at the building. And it was really interesting to hear some of their input and some of their ideas. And uh, uh, I, I also think that they learned a lot of the things that they saw. But it was very much, they contributed to quite a bit, and they clearly been thinking about it for a while. Great. All set, Mr. O'Leary? Mr. Walner? Yeah, um, I went on a tour with uh, the chair we saw the fire station, so I got this in detail. And clearly needs the work, so <laughs> thank you. Looks like a good plan. Happy to see it. Um, uh, uh, moving on, I know that you're talking about Town Hall, the Intergenerational Community Center. Um, I saw that in the invoice to the uh, bill that's coming out of the way, and I keep seeing Intergenerational Community Center is going to be a distributed park. Um, I believe that's still very much an open discussion, and wouldn't want you to get too far in drawing that conclusion, because until we have a decision about the sewer uh, coming up in late October, November, um, I think that, to me, is still a very big discussion about which, where that goes. And I keep seeing and I keep hearing that's going to Shriver Park. So if you're designing it specifically for that, I'd say you're, you're we have a potentially wasting your money. I, I would like to clarify that to some degree. Um, the architectural firm of Abacus, which does a lot of community centers, is subcontracted by HKT to work on the intergenerational center. Um, it is not being designed specifically for Shriver Park. It is true that we've done some wetlands flagging there and are looking at it as a possibility, but whatever is designed will be conceptual and could go on any piece of land, worst case scenario. So obviously it would have to be tweaked somewhat if you put it on the top of a mountain, but it is not specific, you know, to switch over part. That has been a site that many people have, have thought might work but it is not a site that the Board of Selectmen or anybody else has voted on or uh, at the ranch on. Then I'll add to that, too, that just, I don't mean to interrupt you, but there was a lengthy meeting. I know Mr. O'Leary at attended it. In between all the water sewer stuff, he sat in on a meeting with all the stakeholders, which were the other committees involved, which was Hillview, um, LUC, um, Parks, Parks and Rec. So everybody was on a Zoom to discuss that. This was towards the end of uh, June, I believe. And there has to be a, there's there has to be some specific 
uh, legal actions taken too for that site because it's in the care, custody, and control of the Hillview Commission as it as the town initially acquired its Ipswich River Park. So there is a lot of moving pieces to being able to to utilize that site that haven't been done yet. But Mrs. Hurlbut's correct. That's long been looked at and long been the, the subject of work being done by the town as to where to locate the intergenerational center. So it's, this is not a new, a new topic or a new issue. So I think what the presentation explained was we're zoning in on the fire department immediately because it's safety issues yeah. and just we can do better by the department in terms of the living, everything about that. I, I, I totally agree with the fire station as the number one priority of what they're doing. When I look at that HKT invoice for 170000 two or three times it says in there the Intergenerational Community Center is at a true department. And so when I saw that, it caused me to remind everybody that has not been decided, there's a lot to go forward. And if you're designing it that way, you know, you could be going too far. I would go one step further. Um, I do not want, know why we would put any resources into this, 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 this town uh, hall, because I think that it should be potentially looked at as being married up with the Intergenerational Community Center. You're building a new building anyways, and you potentially might have sewer going right down here where the, why would you tie up property here that could be used for another purpose? So on both fronts, I say those are discussion points that haven't, hasn't been had yet. If you go too far down the line, you know, don't complain if I bring this up again at a later time because we didn't <laughs> anticipate the potential problem. But as far as the fire station is concerned, totally agree with everything you're doing and, uh, you know, um, happy to support. Okay, all set, Mr. Walner? Yes, all set. Any questions, Mrs. Gonzalez? Um, I just, first of all, agree with Mr. O'Leary, and I'm happy to hear that that everybody's involved in that, getting their ideas out there. I think that's great. Um, I'm just curious about the door you talked about that got expanded. What was the purpose of putting the big door in there? Was there a reason for that? I have no idea. <laughs> I think back in the day, they looked at it, they thought it would improve efficiency and only have one door moving at a time. What it caused, and they could have, couldn't really have possibly foreseen, is that that big door is so heavy, it's constantly being repaired because the weight of that door alone on the rollers and all the moving parts in that system continuously fails through the years. So we've had to replace numerous things and, and try to beef up the structural integrity of that door so that it's a lot stiffer, which increases the weight, which causes a repetitive cycle. So we're, we, we're, we want to go back to four existing doors. And Is that how it was originally? That's how it was originally. That they replaced? Correct. I just, I just would hate to go back to a problem that they thought they had. Like maybe this big door wasn't the answer, but was there a problem with that original setup that Maybe there's a better. I, I we do a lot of fire stations, and that works. That's pretty standard. I tell you, the problem is, I think some of the columns inside the apparatus bay, and we have an opportunity to fix that by virtue of the fact that the roof, we and, and that section through the building, uh, I didn't go into the details, but it has to. That roof has to be completely rebuilt. Um, to take the weight of another floor. Right. And it means that we have to boost up the columns because it would be more of a load. And we can now, and we haven't really gotten into the details, but we're going to investigate taking out a row of columns and then spanning in the opposite direction and picking up that load uh, at the side walls. So do you think that was the issue? Was the column with the well, it is it's the original the columns, door. as you saw. That I just would door, hate to go back to know. a problem that was already there. We did talk about that already, as far as moving as many columns as we can to keep as much open space as we can, okay. because as as you can kind of see through the pictures, what Bill described already is that, especially with our ladder truck, we try to put those doors up just the way the doors are positioned. It is in line with some of those columns. It's, it's 
So that was, that. that was the original problem. Yeah, so, but it created a whole, <laughs> whole other problem. Okay. So now when we talked about it with, uh, with Bill uh, last week, you know, we're going to try to try to build, bring the newer columns forward as much and make it part of that front wall and yeah. carry it span across with wider, wider web steel and see if we can, we can do that. If not, I mean, hopefully that can be done. But if not, I don't know. I mean, it can be done. It can we, be we've done. already had our structural engineer look at it. Uh, and there's a preliminary engineer, so we know we can do it. All right, good. Um, yeah. That's all. Thank you. Thank you. Yeah. Wh whoever parks those engines <laughs> is a <laughs> get, deserves a medal well, because I can't, it's incredible. The back truck that's you right up to the around. wall. It's unbelievable. Well, what's yeah. most important is that you guys saw how close everything is. Yeah. That's, that's, a, that's a safety danger to, to, to the membership there. They're very cognizant. We back up and we have a backer for every time we're yes. backing a truck into the building. Uh, but as you guys have seen, and if you haven't, please come down so you can see because it's. It just highlights the issue. I think also not so having, I think the lack of updated hazmat facility there I think is a pretty yeah. huge concern and we we definitely can do better by our fire department to have their 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 living space upgraded it's you know it's not a summer camp it's a it's a professional department and, and animal house actually <laughs> it looked worse than that <laughs> if you ever saw that uh, um, I mean, a lot has changed in the structure since the no togas up the there. But, you know, <laughs> yeah, of course. We've learned yes. more, and the apparatus yeah. has, has gotten a lot bigger too. So right, right. Yeah. But we yeah. also need yeah. yeah. to pay extra money to buy smaller trucks, so to speak. Is that right, Tom? If we were forced so to, so they uh, fit into the bags. Well, so it, I, the non-standard sizes because of the size of the bags. So there, I just think it's it, if you the tour did really help me. I haven't been able to make it to all of the master facilities plan meeting, which brings me to my next comment that I, I just really wanted to thank Abby for that. You know, we are, we do act as liaisons to a lot of the committees or we're appointed to a lot of these committees and just as select board members, you know, we could be at multiple meetings every day of the week. So it's hard to make every single meeting, but she rearranged it so that I was able to go to that one and for sure that kind of brought the whole thing to uh, a gr better understanding and certainly your plans did. But I also just want to say thank you to you because, you know, we had COVID, we had delay, everybody wonders why does it take so long for things to happen, but these are really intensely focused studies that are done of this and certainly the architect did, but it also takes someone like Abby moving it forward for us and trying to get things corralled for us. And we know we have a really trusted resource in her to be able to, to take care of these things. So um, I want to thank you as well for getting this moving along. Getting this back on, back on track. Kind. Thank you no, I appreciate much. it. Yeah. All right. If there's no, oh, Mr. Colberto. Just for next steps for the board's awareness, you yes, will see a list sure. of worn articles. One article recommended by the Facilities Master Plan Committee for um, schematic design of the fire station, uh, uh, of the fire station renovation project. So that would be the next step as recommended by the architects. Um, so we'll be working through the details of what that would look like and how we would fund it. But it, it is uh, an order of magnitude, um, you know, around $300,000 expense um, out of a uh, total design cost that could go up upwards of a million dollars bill is that right yeah so this would be the first or the next step to build on the master plan work for a building project that i know we all identified and, and feel is a, a priority the second thing i will just add is that the facilities master plan because of how much time has passed since the project was begun and when the original appropriation was sought and i believe 2016 or 17 um, there is a need for additional funding, the dollar amount for which we don't have right now, but there's also an article that they've submitted for that as well that you'll see in the list of warrant articles when we get to that agenda item. Great. I just wanted to tie that together. Great. Okay, all the set. Schematic funding, the schematic design, by the way, will um, include a lot of little C's and some, um, 
some things that will probably be cherished memories for some of you, such as uh, boards and making sure that the land is supported and uh, mm -hmm. steel, et cetera. So it's, it, it, it offers the opportunity to have a much more accurate price. That, you know, it was just raised here. Is there going to be an alternative um, for that build out of that upper space as well. Remember when we looked at it, it was just going to be used as storage, but it had the potential oh, yes. to be oh, built yes. out. That was one of the things that the firefighters wanted, and they wanted more natural light. Yes. 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 Who knew? I was, you know, I yes. was great, but so we built out, but on a fairly low key way, so that it could be somebody might be able to put a desk in there in front of the window. Great. So yes. Great. Okay. I think one other thing we should probably just mention very briefly is uh, when you're talking about alternatives, uh, this building is going to require a lot of work and, and there was concern, is it going to be cheaper to just go build a building in some place? And what, this is one of the reasons we did this detailed cost estimate and uh, in fact, uh, compared to the cost of a new building, this is less expensive. So uh, we did do the due diligence, I think. Um, that, you know, I think we, we don't have a perfect design of what we could do with a brand new building, but I think we're pretty close <laughs> to getting <coughs> everything that, that uh, the chief needs. And keeping with an almost exact footprint of what's there without ruining the aesthetic either. Not ruining, but modifying But it. he's been a partner yeah. in this. This Great. is like really Yes. yes. <laughs> right. And you have Mark Hall on that too, and he really oh, loves. Um, yes. He um, loves the, you know, yes. the, 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 the Mark Hall. Yeah. 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 All right. But no, and, and uh, it's been a good. Uh, I talk to the chief all the time. I talk to Bill all the time. We go back and forth. Mm -hmm. And so it's, it's been a very good relationship. Great. Okay. Um, and it was very interesting to see, talk to some of the firefighters that have been involved in the And the other thing that was interesting was that aside from the fact that just basically you really the cost for it, you know as well as I do, if you can build a new building, you're going to make it bigger. You're going to do this. You're going to do that. You don't really have space. You're probably not going to do an existing renovation. But the, in addition to that problem, what do you do with the firehouse? Now, you could turn it into town offices or something. That's going to be pretty high ticket just to turn it into something that's usable. And in fact, that was something that one of the firefighters brought up. If you build a new fire station, nice idea, but it's going to cost a lot of money to renovate the existing firehouse into some other usable thing. Okay. All right. All set? Well, thank you. Thank, thank you. you all for uh, the thank presentation. You. All right. We're going to move on. Mr. Gilberto is going to give us a two-minute, or Mr. O'Leary, three-minute wastewater. I can't um. do two-minute. <laughs> <laughs> we know Mr. Studo <laughs> isn't here. Oh, yeah. She forgot the zero. And, uh, yeah. <laughs> Thank you. We know <laughs> Mr. Studo isn't here. We wanted to really roll out a more informative presentation when he's able to join us again. So, Mr. Gilberto, anything? That was probably half of the explanation right there. <laughs> okay. um, we, and for those who are watching, um, we had expected and were planning to have a workshop this past Friday night and a uh, very detailed presentation at tonight's select board meeting. Um, uh, uh, for, for a number of reasons, including uh, some changes in uh, availability for folks we wanted to have at that meeting, um, as well as some work that is continuing to go on in the background to really refine information um, uh, and, uh, and make sure that we're presenting um, as accurate uh, a picture for everybody's consideration as possible. Um, you know, we did determine that we need mo some more time. Um, there have been ongoing meetings um, every week or two um, with uh, the DPW, with Mr. Studo, Mr. O'Leary, Myself, the finance director, the town planner, the assessor, the treasurer, um, our consultants at, at FXM and Kleinfelder, um, and a lot of progress has been made as they uh, they uh, they pull together information for us to look at. Um, but there is some more work that will need to be done uh, in the coming weeks. Uh, but it is our hope to 
uh, again, take up that workshop style presentation um, as soon as possible um, for the members here, for um, folks who are also involved and want to come and ask questions, and then have a, a more public uh, televised uh, discussion and presentation as well as ongoing workshops as we go to that town meeting. Um, we're continuing to work through with regard to um, the route um, and the, the details of the route to connect to the plant and we're working with our counterparts in the towns of North Andover and Andover um, to um, um, work that out and work out the logistics of how everything uh, will work together to, to get there. So um, while we haven't um, had a detailed presentation in a few meetings now, um, rest assured that quite a bit of work is ongoing, including um, many hours by many folks, Mr. Studel and Mr. O'Leary included. So I'll stop and I don't know if Mr. O'Leary wanted to add anything further to that. We're almost there. Well, that's great. There. Yeah, we have a lot of unanswered questions uh, with Kleinfelder and our other uh, consultants. You know, we're four-fifths of the way there. And, and the last fifth uh, has some very critical components to it that, you know, while we would have been prepared on Friday night to bring you all up to speed and up to date on everything to the point where we're at, um, you would have the same questions that myself and Mr. Studo and Mr. Gabero still have. Mm -hmm. So that uh, we want to be sure that when we make the presentation, we're able to answer most, if not all, of the questions that are going to be asked of considered. So it's uh, everything from the route to what it's going to cost for each property owner, whether they are on the route or not on the route, you know, what's the tie-in going to be, how's it going to work. Um, and then there's a, a lot of decisions that this board's going to have to make in a very short period of time as to uh, how we address this whole thing. So uh, we're this close. Okay. So very shortly. Yeah. Right. Major. Well, thank you again, and uh, you know that, like I said, we could be in meetings every single day of the week, and Sometimes you are know. so. Yeah, yeah. And we sprinkle in a little mediation here and there, and we <laughs> sprinkle in uh, all of the rest. So thank you, and Mr. Stewart and Mr. Gilbert, certainly our our department, our team here for keeping that moving along as quickly as can be too. So we're looking forward to. We're looking forward to when everything can finally be kind of unroll, unrolled for all of us to be able to ask questions about it and get some more understanding on it. And that will be published so that everybody can join and hear what we are hearing as well. So next order of business is a public hearing for on the transfer of license at 202 North Street Retail Package Store Wine and Malt Beverages. Aria and Julie Inc. doing business as Route 28 Lucky Mart, and I do have a notice of public hearing to read to the record, um, which is in accordance with Chapter 138 of the Massachusetts General Laws. A public hearing will be held by the Select Board on Monday, August 8, 2022, in Room 14, Town Hall, 235 North Street, North Reading, Massachusetts, in person and via virtual technology at 8.45 p.m., on the application of Aria and Julie Inc. doing business as Route 28 Lucky Mart for the transfer of the retail package goods store wine and malt beverages from Smokes and Snacks Inc. doing business as Route 28 Lucky Mart Inc. the license to be exercised at 202 North Street North Reading Massachusetts in a one-story building no cellar one back room for storage two laboratories the hearing access information, the Zoom link, internet link, telephone links, and dial by location, meeting ID, and an additional link to find your local number are all published on the notification by the select board on July 28, 2022. So we'll call that, open that public hearing and ask for anyone who is here on behalf of the applicant and the licensee to step forward and identify yourself. If it pleases the board, can you hear me? Yes. Hello? Yes, Attorney Perlman, we can hear you. Okay, my name is Arthur Perlman. I represent Vigabet, Patel, and Aria Julie, and Julie Inc. I can't, There's we can't actually. The package store license currently held by Smokes and Snacks for the premise of 202 North Street in North Reddit. Uh, Attorney Perlman, I can, Julie, can you hear me, Attorney Perlman? We can't actually can see you. Are you there with the license applicant or? Yes, the, 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 the applicant is beside me, Mr. Patel here with me. Does your camera work? I think they're logging to get their phone. Oh, 
I can't I actually see. Work. We I can't actually you. see any of you. I think they're logging with the phone. Yeah. They just sent a request to start the video. Let's see. If that Hello? Attorney, Attorney Perlman? Perlman? Yes. We can't see any of you. I'm sorry, I can't hear you. I didn't hear you. What? We can't see any of you. Okay, hold on a minute. I think there's a... When you do the participants, does it show them, Michael? I just sent a message to ask them. Does that do anything? It does not, no. Oh, yes. Is that, is that help? Yes, here we go. That helps. Okay, I'm, I'm not very computer literate. Okay, we see you, Attorney Perlman. Would the gentleman sitting to your right please identify yourself? Uh, my name is Pratnish Patel. I'm son of uh, Vijayan Patel. Okay, and do you have the applicant with you, Attorney Perlman? Actually, it's, 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 it's uh, her, her daughter. Uh, she wasn't feeling very well tonight, so I asked them to come in her stead. The, the applicant and the proposed manager is not with you? Not here right now, no. Okay. But these people do know everything that's going on. Okay. Okay, I guess, um, why don't you go ahead with the presentation, whatever you would, would like to All say right. about the application. All right, so Ms. Ms. Patel is currently living at a 380. Well, first of all, Aria Julie is a Massachusetts corporation. Vijay Ben is the sole officer, director, and shareholder. Ms. Patel is currently living at 380 Cross Street in Winchester. Uh, Vijay Ben has worked uh, at a business in Wakefield, Massachusetts, which has a liquor license. She will be the manager of this business and spend at least 40 hours a week at this business. The business currently operating at 202 uh, North Street in Reading is open seven days a week. It also intends to be open seven days a week with hours of 6 a.m. to 10 a.m. with liquor sales after 8, Monday through Saturday. And Sunday, the store will be open from, uh, sales of liquor will be from 10 to 10. Uh, the layout of the store will be as per the floor plan that I submitted with the application. Media Ben already having been in the liquor business is familiar with the laws relative to chilled alcohol. Additionally, she has completed her tips program and has certification. She has met with the police department and has provided fingerprints. Um, she will uphold the statutory law and also familiarize herself with any rules or regulations specific to the town of North Redding regarding the seal of alcohol. And I would respectfully request that this board approve the application for the transfer of license. Okay, um, it's going to be a little difficult with the applicant not even here to ask questions, but go ahead, Mr. O'Leary. You, do you have any questions? Yeah. Oh, you're <laughs> Okay, Mr. Walner. Uh, yeah, I'm just a little confused. Can you straighten this out for me? Are the new owners, do, is there any relationship between the new owners and the, the person who's selling the business? Family or friends or anything like that? Oh, no, no. As a matter of fact, we found out after applying that this fellow had a violation going we were never advised of that by him when we entered into this transaction. And then we later found out after we entered into the transaction, again I was talking to the town, and we found out that his license had actually been now taken away from him. We had no idea of that either. No, we have no relationship with this person other than very arm's length and not very happy. Okay. Any other questions? Um, 
Yeah, uh, the, the new owners, have they ever had an, an issue where they have sold to miners in any of the businesses they've owned previously? Are you asking if, if, if Media Bank has ever? If the new owners have ever had a violation no. of selling to miners? No, they've never any sold to miners, no. Okay, thank you. All set, Mr. Walner. Set. Mrs. Gonzalez. Yeah, I'm just a little, I'm, I'm looking at how many, one, how many other establishments are you running right now, the new owner, the, the potential new owner? He's not working with you. Keep up. Well, uh, can you repeat it? I'm, I'm having a hard time hearing you. I keep breaking up. How many other establishments are are you involved with right now? As of now, the only one right now that she's involved with has an alcohol license is is what is it? K. 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 and Wakefield. And when she gets to the store, she will no longer be involved with them. She will then this will be her store. The others are not her store. She's worked at them. Oh, okay. All right, thank you. This will be her only store that she has. Okay, thank you. Okay, I, I have a few questions. Uh, unfortunately for me, it's a huge issue for me that your the applicant isn't even here to answer questions of us. So that's a, to me, that's a going to be a drawback for me to vote in favor of this right off the bat. Um, but in the application itself, she's identified actually four places of business, I believe three of which are owned by her son. So uh, the one that you just mentioned, the KVP Inc., is that, is that the name Jeffrey Liquors in, in Wakefield? Or what's the actual name of the place? Yeah. Jeffrey, yeah. Jeff, Jeffrey Liquors. Mm -hmm. And there's a R Ramila convenience store that she's identified. Does that too have a liquor license? Uh, no. And so where is that located? Winchester? Winchester. Okay. That's in Winchester. And they attempted to get a liquor license in Winchester, but they were no. denied? Oh, uh, yes. We tried uh, to apply there, but the uh, town declined. And, and the because town... Because of drive through The town declined because of... Because it had drive-thru. Because they had a, the store had a drive-thru, and they weren't going to allow liquor in a store with a drive-thru. Okay. Was there also an issue with regard to other disciplinary issues that weren't ABCC related, but that had to do with your other establishments? With me, she has never been. Okay. That she has an owner's store, but she has worked with them, and she's never sold for mine. Or any other types of issues relating to liquor sales? No, she's never had any problems. Okay, and the, the one of the other places that she identified was um, Prag, Pragnesh Inc. in the application. Is that a liquor establishment? It has beer and wine, yes. Where is that located? Gardner. 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 And then the last one, I think it was, I just... She was supervised by one of the current owners of Smokes and Stacks at the place, Nine Central Square. So she 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 listed Vimal Patel as her supervisor at that location. So they do know each other. Oh, but that different Vimal, not the same Vimal. This Vimal and Patel, who's the current owner here. That's not the same no, owner. No, different Vimal, different different person, different person. Okay, where is that place located that she listed on the application? Uh, okay, Nine Central Square in Boston. Is in Boston because on the I I have a it's hard for me to believe that where she's employed currently at four different locations that she's got to be able to work here forty hours a week and I wanted to ask her about that. Um, so it's unfortunate that she's not here to speak to us on her her application. This they, lady on the board has something against Indian Americans. She keeps they work hard. She's just being. Excuse me, I'm not sure who's talking, but 
this is Arthur Perlman talking now. Uh, I can tell you because I, I know these people. I, I've met with her. I know what she's doing. She's not going to be working at these other schools. These are schools she's worked at while she hasn't owned her own business. She's not going to own her own business. She will not be working at those schools. Okay. And this transaction, and, and by the way, whoever is commenting about us, we don't have an issue with anyone. It's our role and responsibility to investigate these applications to the to let, as hard as as just, as comprehensively as we can we take our work very seriously so when we have an application before us i'm one out of five members of this board but i would want to definitely make sure that i speak directly with the applicant to whom we're co considering granting the liquor license because this is an establishment that we've had problems at before and then the, uh, my other question is, in terms of her hours there being 40, she's also the proposed manager of this establishment here in North Reading. Right, Attorney Perlman? She is. Yeah, she is going to be the owner and she'll be the manager on the license. And in terms of the employees that she's going to have in the North Reading store, are they going to be the same employees that are currently working at Smokes and Stacks? I, I would not want to touch anything that's. I don't want to be rude, but I don't. I don't. We don't intend to take anything from what's currently there over into what we take over. Okay. It will be a wait. Okay. And then my my last thing that I just wanted to note what I noted on the um, because we don't see the the quarry but we see the application and there's a there's an incorrect birth date on the application the quarry application so i think that should you should probably revisit that um in in um in make sure that's a correct co the correct um the correct date there and then on the quarry yes yeah I, I don't know if you recorded it, but So, yeah, I don't want to discuss yet. I, I don't want to discuss personal information on this, in this context of open meeting, but I'm just directing Attorney Perlman to take a look at that because I did look through it. Because that's my responsibility as a licensing board member to make sure everything that I see is in order. No, but I, I Mr. Attorney, no, no, no. Attorney no. Perlman, Attorney Perlman, <laughs> we lost you again. Yes. We we'll, we we'll lost sorry. you. We can. I was, I was looking. We can have it. We can have. We can ask Mr. Gilberto to follow up. I uh, follow up with you, but because I don't want to get into personal, personal identifying information in an open meeting. I just want to draw your attention to that. And then my other question. I I, other members, I, I do have another colleague that wants to ask you a question, but my other, um, my other question to you is, how many other employees does Vijabet expect to have at this location in North Reading? I would say probably two. Okay, and just including her or two in, in addition to her? Two in addition to her. Okay. So three all together. Okay. Um, and then my one final thing uh, that I wanted to, to note is the, there is going to be a, a seller's funding of this transaction. That's what it looked like in the application. So the seller's right. giving a note to this buyer to fund this purchase. Correct. Right. right? But there's no, this seller isn't going to retain anything other than holding the note. No stock, no other business interest other than holding a note for a loan? That's correct. It's, like I said, there's going to be a clean slate. Nothing, no one at that business, owning that business, working at that business will be there once the new owners take over. Okay. All right. And I'm, I'm just going to turn back to my colleague. Mrs. Gonzalez had a, another question for you, Attorney Perlman. Well, I have a, sure. I, I have a, oh, not close to my mic. This mic. I have a kind of a two-part question, and one is from Mr. Gilberto. 
I feel like the cart is before the horse here oh, because yeah. I thought we had a continuation about the license, the current license that was supposed to take place with the current owner. The so, I mean, if you if you don't mind me answering yeah. that one, the the present owner. Um, Surrender the license. Oh, I did not know that. To, so, from our last meeting, the present okay. owner through council surrendered uh, the license okay. because we were we gave a brief extension instead of taking disciplinary action because he was in the midst of this transaction. Right. Okay, I was so, aware of that. Right. So, so we we agreed to accept that and give the opportunity. I think by this meeting for the present owner. It's quite unusual. I, I don't think we've ever done that before, but we've also never had three three violations in a row like we did at this establishment. Yeah. So that's why it's important for us to speak to the licensee personally because these are types of things that we want to review with, the, or I, at least I want to review with an applicant before I vote on granting an application. So is there anything else you had it's unusual that we did that but we did that because it w we were told there was a transaction of uh, a transfer right. transaction I, I, in the works yes, do you remember I that I remember that okay. but yeah but I didn't know that he surrendered it I didn't know that yes he voluntarily okay. turned it in and covered all of or, or got rid of whole wholesalers took the took the product out of there while this transaction was being was in the works because it, if you recall at that meeting, if, if we took a disciplinary action and it was likely to was occur, yeah. that we wouldn't have been able to then right. entertain a, a, a transfer. Um, there would have been an appeal and things like that would have, would have prevented this transaction from being considered. So is that, does that answer your question? That does. I don't think Attorney chair. Perlman really was even aware of any of that. So now you know Attorney Perlman. Yeah, and just for the record, <laughs> I just you, I, I found it all through the town. The town has been great. It, the town has been great. I, we had no, first of all, we had no idea about the violation until your town told me. And then we absolutely, had, and I was astonished that he had turned in his license. I'd never heard of that. And, and, and I've been doing liquor licensing for probably 30 years or more. I've never heard of someone, I mean, other than if they're going out of business, but I've never heard someone just turn in their license. And if I, I could just amazed. be clear. The town was very forthcoming with me, and it's been yeah. great, and I appreciate it. Thank you. I just want to be clear to you, to the public, to whoever was making a statement. Um, this has nothing to do with anybody's nationality whatsoever. There's been an issue with this particular place. They've had many, many violations. They've come before us many, many times. And there's a big concern for us as a board to protect our youth who have been able to buy alcohol in that establishment for many years now. So, you know, let's just make that clear that, that we're concerned with this and don't want that to continue. Thank you. Mr. Gonzalez, are we? I'm not sure I heard that. It's okay. It wasn't directed I, I, towards I'm you. I'm not sure I heard that. <laughs> it, was, it, oh, it was not directed towards you. Can you hear me? Was, was someone saying that the location has been I, a bad location? I think they that no, someone. You have to speak this way, Leanne. No, you have to speak I, that way. as we were trying to engage in questioning of this, of you in this during this public hearing someone was commenting about how where people are against Indian Americans which is not accurate so Mrs. Gonzalez wanted to correct that record for you uh, you know clearly the board has granted a license at this location to uh, I Indian Americans prior to you presenting this application so the board is welcoming of all cultures and nationalities and backgrounds here so our ro role and responsibility here which you know quite well attorney Perlman and so doesn't Pragnesh because he owns a number of these establishments our role is to in investigate and question not just for our own edification as to character and suitability but also for the general pu public that might be joining us listen 
instead of uh, indicting us for doing our job. And that's all Mrs. Gonzalez was saying in her own way. Mr. Uh, Wallman. And, and let me be clear, let me be clear that it was not me or my client who yes. said that. And that's not what we're thinking. Right, right. That's not right. Okay. We, we know that. We know that's a little clunky going back and forth on this, but we, at least we can, we can see you, so we can see when your mouth is talking to us. Oh, so, all right, Mrs. Gonzalez, are you all set? Yes, thank you. Mr. Walner, are you all set? Yeah, I'm just saying I'm just uncomfortable she's not here to speak for herself again. When yes. the kids know that they can get alcohol at a certain location, yes. you have a reputation, they're going to be testing you from the minute you open that door. And so it's really, you know, we've had a habitual problem here. Yeah. And, uh, you know, all we need is one kid to get in a car accident, and then they're going to be coming back at us, Correct. asking us how we let this happen. So, um, you know, so we're just, uh, I'm really uncomfortable not seeing the person and talking to the person who's going to be buying the store. Um, it's the only thing I have right now. I, I, I appreciate it. It, it, it. In our defense, I would have come, but I'm right now battling Lyme disease which has turned into, and I'm wearing a brace on my hand because it's turning into, a, I guess they say rheumatoid arthritis comes from the Lyme disease. So I'm the one that really couldn't get up there this late at night to try to do it. That's why I'm doing it from here. And that's why I had the clients come here. And I think it's, uh, it's, it's multiplied by the fact that Benjamin is now sick. So, you know, we, we, we had intended to try to come up there, but we just, just couldn't. Okay. Anything else, Mr. Walner? Uh, no, I'm good, thank you. Anything else, Mr. O'Leary? Nope, I think uh, they satisfied our concerns in relation to any relationship, first of all. Yes. And uh, it appears as though the applicant has a significant amount of experience in working in establishments that have liquor licenses, and what we've been told has been no um, violations, prior violations, and uh, she appears to have had a significant amount of experience working in these type of establishments. And it is unfortunate that we aren't able to see or meet with her yeah. uh, personally, but uh, in the absence of that, I mean, everything else seems to be in order. Okay, I'm just uncomfortable taking a vote when the actual applicant isn't before us. So, um, Mr. Gilberto keeps raising his hand. I'm gonna turn it over to you for a moment and we still have to take public comment too. Th thank you Madam Chair. I, I do have a few questions for the uh, the applicant. Just to confirm um, Attorney Perlman, did, did I hear you say that Vigibin would no longer work at the four locations that are identified that she works at right now? Oh yeah, absolutely. Those are all, those are all family businesses. She does not have to be there. She's not hurting anyone by not being there. They know that she's now looking to get into her own business. There's no problem with that. Thank you. And just with regard to the current status, the, the licensee um, volunteered to surrender the license for us to go through this process for a transfer. If a transfer was not affected by September 26th, I believe the date is, we would continue with a disciplinary hearing um, and um, you know certainly any sort of discipline would be on the table. Uh, at, he volunteered, the owner that is, to uh, not only turn the license in, which he did the next morning, but to also um, rid the establishment of any alcoholic beverage and signage. And that is something, as we understand it, has taken some time because of the amount of alcohol that was in the establishment. Um, I think I flagged this to you as a potential issue because of the fact that it looked like the sale of inventory was part of the, of the a transaction, and I want to make sure that no alcohol is being sold. Before you answer, I will let you know I checked with the police department today, and I, I know there is some wine still that he allegedly has not been able to turn back to distributors and, and, and may be holding to sell as part of this transaction. So could you comment on that? Sure. As, as in a normal, which this is not, in a, in a normal transfer of license and a purchase of a business, we do buy their inventory. In this case, you told them not to. And also, they're not therefore buying it. If they were to have any beer inventory, uh, it would probably be out of date. 
So I, we wouldn't be buying it anyway. If there's wine inventory, and if it's white, if it's within two to three years, we would normally buy it. Uh, if it's red, it could be longer than two or three years, and we, and we would buy it. If the town tells us they don't want us to buy it, and they basically are telling us not to buy it, then we're not going to buy it. If the town doesn't say that, then the normal course of business, we would buy his inventory. Yeah, no, I, I think I don't think that we t we said not to. Right. We he w he agreed to surrender the license, therefore he couldn't sell it, and he agreed that what he had on there was going to be removed. So to, the way to effectuate that was, as he explained to us, was to get it back to the wholesalers, which it was going to take some time. So perhaps what's left over inventory there certainly can't be sold until a tr the, the completion of a transfer and the approval of ABCC if that happened, if that does happen. But he, um, whatever's probably there, he's certainly not selling it, but he, he would have to have it covered or put away, I think, is how obviously the police expected it to be gone and it was still there. So I mean, I expected it to be gone to begin we, with. We you. all did, but yeah, that was the part of allowing the surrender. But they haven't said that any sales have occurred no. there. So no, no, they're not actively selling this alcohol. It, my understanding is it may be boxed either in the back or if it's on the storefront, it's covered up so it's not accessible for sale. My only concern was there were representations in the transaction that yes. there would be no change in the type of business that they would conduct between now and the, um, the consummation of the sale. But that's already happened. They're no longer selling alcohol. And I, I just want to make sure that it, we all, again, this was voluntarily offered to the board in lieu of an actual disciplinary yes. hearing you know, proceeding, uh, but I guess for the record, you are not buying any alcohol from this establishment, is that correct? Again, if, if in the normal course, unless the town tells me otherwise, when we go to do the closing, if the, although he's breached the agreement so many different ways, and I suppose if we breached the agreement by not buying his inventory, I suppose we could do that, but that's not, <laughs> how I tend to do business. I tend to try to go by the rules and the, and the contracts that you sign, and my clients tend to do that with me. So if we did it, I guess we would still be looking at the inventory and saying we would buy it because in the contract it says we're going to buy his inventory that's saleable. Um, uh, again, unless the town tells me they would not want us to, in which case I would do what the, what the town prescribes. Yeah. But, but otherwise, we would, in the normal course, buy the inventory that's there, that's saleable. Like oh, I said, okay. there's beer there, I'm sure it's stale. It's <laughs> out of date, and we would be buying it. It's only wine. Uh, but yeah. so just to be clear. Wines, we, we probably would, unless you direct us otherwise. Yeah. No, so just Ms. to be clear, you're not, get any, you're not going to get any direction from the town of North Reading telling you what you should or should not be buying. Sure. But the expectation of this board and the agreement that was made with the current operator was that there wouldn't be any alcohol bever alcoholic beverages available for transfer for the sale because he was going to rid himself of it. He was going to get back to the distributors, get it off site, and there wouldn't be any inventory um, of that nature available. So we're not okay, telling you whether you can buy it. I have no problem holding him to his contract with you. I have no problem holding no, him to his contract with you. I will say, say to you is that the, 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 there should be a, a little or no expectation on your part of having any inventory to buy uh, when it comes to or beer or wine. Alcohol yeah, inventory, alcohol. yes. So. All right. But we're not going to direct anybody. Right. Yeah, we can't get involved in your right. business transaction. Um, other than right. that, we allowed him to surrender it to potentially make that uh, possible transfer possible. Mr. Gilberto, yeah. did you have any other questions? I don't. Okay. Anybody else have any other questions? Because I'm going to move on to public comment if we're all set right now. Okay. So we will accept anybody in attendance um, who wishes to uh, comment in favor of this application to please step forward and identify yourself. Anybody, Mr. Gilberto? Hearing none. We'll close that portion and invite anybody who uh, would like to speak against this license to come forward. 
hearing and seeing none, we'll, we will close the public comment portion of this hearing. Okay, so what's the board's pleasure here? Is, is, any, is anybody else besides me struggling with the fact that we don't have the applicant here? Even sick. I, I don't mean in person, but, but she could be on as I don't know. So I, I. Be better if she was here. Yes. May, may I speak to them? Um. Sh sure. <laughs> that was a yes. Yes, yes Attorney yes. Crumman. I'm sorry. Yes. Sure. Sure. All right, gen generally speaking, my clients don't say virtually anything at, at hearings. I usually do all the talking. As far as asking questions, as far as what that person is thinking or what they might do, I have a son here who is as close to her as anybody, plus I know her very well. And we can tell you what she does. If you look at this family, because it's an extended family and they have a number of businesses, they operate them very well. I mean, this, what's going on at this 202 North is, is an aberration. That's unbelievable. These folks don't operate that way. Um, they have scanners. They have training. The people that work there are mostly family, so they're all concerned that their businesses mean something. I don't know who was operating this business for the last owner, but they could have been family and people that were close to him, but they would never have allowed this. I mean, this is just beyond the pale. Like I say, I've never heard of someone having to turn in their license. I've never heard of someone having four violations in, you know, a short span. You, you take action. I mean, a, a violation can happen, but it's it's the outlier. It's, it's not the norm. Uh, so, you know, as far as her not being here, I, I, I can tell you, you know, what she's doing, what her plans are, and her son can tell you what she's done and how she's been there and been at stores of different family members and has never violated anything. They operate nice, clean businesses, uh, and they operate them within the rules and regulations. No, uh, I, I, I have no and, doubt. And I, I have no doubt, will. Attorney Perlman, and in fact, we, we allowed this sort of d different type of thing because we didn't want to hold the, the sins of the current owner against a potential business owner there. The, the business is there, but against someone from applying for a license there. But it does, it, I have no doubt to your credibility or her son's credibility, but there is something to be said for us to have a Zoom face-to-face -face or you know in person face-to-face -face with an applicant and you know that that to me it doesn't matter what you say or what her it does matter but it's it's nice to have that person appear before us that if we do have questions or we want to get a sense of how she's going to manage the business as the proposed manager but um, I'm gonna I pr we appreciate your commenting on that but I'm gonna we're gonna go back to deliberating on what we're gonna do on this application okay um, anybody else have any uh, thoughts on it All set, Mr. Mr. Walner. Uh, make a motion. I think I'm okay to continue. Move to continue it. No, I meant I think I'm okay to go on. Moving, moving forward. Okay. I think so. All set. Yeah. Good. Is, do we have a motion? <laughs> we have to have a motion. Oh, to sorry. Move. That's me. <laughs> <laughs> We're gonna do it one 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 way or the other. Wake up, please. Um, all right, I, Madam Chair, I move to approve an amendment to the pledge of license nope. stock. No, that's nope. the next nope. one. I mean, no other. We're going to call you next, I promise. Oh, sorry. <laughs> Sitting right. patiently. Where is it? I um, can't say it was dull. <laughs> oh, I'm sorry. I skipped over it. My, my, sorry. Uh, okay, Madam Chair, I move to approve a transfer of license for the retail package good store license from Smokes and Stacks doing business as Route 28 Lucky Mart, Aria, and Julie Incorporated doing business as Route 28 Lucky Mart, 202 North Street, subject to all regulatory department requirements. Second. Motion by Mr. Walner, second by Mr. O'Leary. Any further discussion? I will say the name change is already an improvement. I'll say that. Personally, that's my personal opinion. <laughs> Mr. O'Leary. Aye. Actually, all those in favor? Yeah. 
Aye. 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 But I, I would like to just make it clear that it has a reputation to the underage kids. So I would hope that you really be on your toes with this. Okay. All set. Okay, Attorney Perlman and Pragnet, uh, Mr. Patel. It's all set. It's it. This board has approved it, but it has to go, as you know, to the ABCC for their approval. So, can you hear us? Are you all set? Yes. Yes. And yes. just can, to, can I say one other thing? Of course. Sorry. Of course. Uh, I will. I will email tomorrow to your office a corrected query i see that the year i see what you're talking about there was a typo and the year is wrong of her birthday i will email a query into the board tomorrow and and just so you'll know what i'm doing it's the last number of the year of birth that, should have been a five that's okay and somehow someone typed a one so i will i will send in a new query tomorrow okay thank you thank you all right, we're all set. Thank you. Um, thank you, uh, Mr. Patel, for also being here to help out with this. And um, we will, it'll have to be approved by ABCC. We look forward to you being successful right. and um, nothing personal, but we hope we don't see you before us again. Right. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Actually, it'd be nice if she came and just yeah, said Yeah, yeah but if she's, yeah. In the, yeah, yeah. she's just we, in the day, she's right up the street. If she wants to come in and say hello, we'd love to meet her. We'd love right. to meet her. Yeah. And welcome her to the community. That would be we nice. We encourage you to do that. Actually. All right. Thank, thank you. you. Thank you. Thank you. Um, to my colleagues, can we just take jump over the Warren articles mm -hmm. to bring yes. New England beverage up yep. and he, our representative has been sitting here patiently <laughs> patiently through our entertaining meeting this evening welcome please identify Good evening, yourself uh, madam chair members of the board my name is james rudser and i was back before this board in believe at the, at the end of may or the beginning of june seeking approval for the pledge of the license of paradise r2 llc doing business as new england beverage to pledge the license in conjunction with a commercial loan anticipated to be made by Newburyport Bank. Uh, this board at, at, at that time approved the pledge and, the, and we were seeking the pledge for up to, uh, a loan of up to 1.2 million. Um, apparently the loan that got approved by Newburyport Bank was only 800,000. Given the variance between the amount that uh, the board had previously approved of the pledge, I thought it was prudent to reapply and um, therefore I'm asking you to either grant a new approval of a pledge and rescind the uh, previously granted approval for the pledge of up to 1.2 or simply amend your previously approved pledge, move, amend that approval down to 800,000. All right, pretty straightforward. Do we have a mo Do we have any discussion? But no really? discussion, but, but neither of those motions are in the packet. Yeah. So oh, I, I, I thought he read the amend. Okay. I, I wrote it as a new motion for a new pledge, but it didn't uh, resend. I just, well, I, the thought occurred to me, I don't want the board to think they're looking to borrow two million bucks. Mm -hmm. no. They're looking to, they're, they're going to borrow, my clients are going to borrow $800,000 from New Report Bank, not on the previously granted $1.2 million approval that you've given us. I so shall we do the motion to amend the approval to the yes. specific amount of eight hundred thousand dollars? That's what mine says. That's what I thought he was reading. Did you say that? Okay. But, but I think your motion was for the approval to pledge it to the eight hundred thousand. Why don't I read it and see if it sounds right? Okay. That sounds like a good idea, <laughs> Mr. Walner. I think it reads right. So the title is application of amendment pledge oh. of license to England Beverage. Madam Chair, I move to approve an amendment to the Pledge of License Stock and Inventory as requested by Paradise R2 Incorporated doing business as New England Beverage, 168, 160 Main Street, and approved at the June 13, 2022 Select Board meeting to lower the financing amount from 1.2 million to 800,000 subject to all regulatory department requirements. I'll second that. Okay, that motion by to work. Mr. Walner, <laughs> second by Mr. O'Leary. Any further discussion? All those in favor? Aye. Aye. All right, thank you. Thank you, Madam Chairman. Thank you for your patience. Yes, Good job, Michael. thank you. I <laughs> just, Karen, who did it? I just job. realized it's because it's 10 o'clock, so we're, we're not. Uh, now we're going to go back and review the warrant articles for the fall annual town meeting, which is scheduled for October 3rd.
correct, Madam Chair. At the high school. Very briefly, this is the current listing of articles. It's not the final listing. It will not be final until next Monday at 4 o'clock p.m. Uh, you'll see here that um, there are a number of articles that are on there. Um, I will ask you to disregard Article 10, appropriate money for wastewater construction, as that will be taken up at a special town meeting. And I would point you to the last two articles, which are outside of routine, to both fund the supplemental appropriation for the facilities master plan and to fund the fire station schematic design. We do not have a dollar amount for number 13 yet, but we will in time for the next meeting. We expect it to be about $300,000 for Article 14. Questions? For any board, commission, or department uh, or citizen petition, the deadline is 4 o'clock p.m. on uh, Monday, August 15th. August 15th, okay. Yes. Where would the funding, I know you don't have the specific dollar amounts, um, where would we be taking the funds for for those two articles? I'm anticipating a sufficient balance in free cash to be able to appropriate for both projects, but we'll certainly be uh, eagerly awaiting the Department of Revenue certification in September or early October. Okay. Any other questions? Anything else the members think needs to be on there? Um, I had brought up um, in increasing another, um, my mind just went blank, um, officer with this position. Uh, what is the what is the oh, public safety resource officer? Officers. Resource sure. officer. I couldn't find it. Um, I had discussed that with the board, kind of, you know, I, and didn't know how everybody felt if we could maybe discuss appropriating. I I know you said there were a couple of different ways we could go about it. Sure. I didn't know if it needed to be on a warrant. So through you, Madam Chair, I would expect that the type of appropriation that that would involve would be an amendment to the operating budget, so I would see it um, being handled under Article 7. That's how we customarily would help would handle something like that. Um, the, the board does have the opportunity to put a specific warrant article on there if that's what comes with the idea uh, um, of the planning that's on, that, that, that might be out there or discussions that are happening out there, but it's not necessary. Um, Article 7 would be a vehicle for which that could be addressed if that's what the community chose to do. Did that answer your question? That's okay. so not necessary to be on there. It doesn't it's need to be a separate article. Article, article. It could seven, be, but it doesn't yeah, need to be. It could be. Article 7 would cover it. Would give, it would give, give, you, give the, the okay. town an opportunity to do okay. it. We could either transfer or, or right. increase uh, an appropriation okay. in, that, in, that, uh, in that article. All right. I just wanted to. To make sure, because if we wanted to have that in place for the school year, mm -hmm. well, I does that would that involve collective bargaining as well? Wouldn't we have to get that squared away, or is that Th there are a number of steps that would be required right. in terms of town meeting? Right. This is the one that strikes me as where it could where, be where at least it could be done. funded. The um, the other thing that the board talked about in terms of the articles was revisiting the affordable housing parcels. At least one of them, which I believe is the Oak Deal, seemed to be the one that everyone was in the most agreement on, even though we were waiting to hear back from um, the proponent on more specifics, and that just kind of died its own death without us hearing more about it. It would be good to have at least there were, I think there were three parcels. The Haverhill one was seriously um, challenged, I think, by the members attending the meeting because it was just just an unsafe location. But the, or, you know, the, the, it's a dangerous location to be placed in more housing, I think. But I think the Oakdale was relatively um, agreed upon, if I'm not putting words in the members' mouths. I think we should have we should revisit that without just letting it languish. We did talk about that. Part of the discussion, though, wasn't just you know, how many units and all the rest, particularly the Hamill Street one, but also the town doing the requisite study of wetlands, mapping it out so that we know what we have yes. rather than relying upon yes. an applicant or somebody who's soliciting us to That's purchase right. the property. Yeah. So, I mean, if you want it should have an article maybe just to yeah. appropriate money to do the studies on these properties oh, so that we can move forward. 
I think that's because important. Because I think the I consensus was, and the, the town meeting vote was, based on the discussion that was had, that the town should assume the responsibility of knowing what we have and what yes. we can put there and then solicit. Right. Because as well, people on hay about developers to develop the property for us, knowing yes. full well what the limitations were going to be. Right, right. And, you know, part of the other argument was, you know, we don't normally do that. Well, you know, this is our land. It's, uh, there's some interest uh, to promote some affordable housing. We should know what we can do on our own pieces of property that are of interest and that we have identified potential sites and we should know what we have and then go and solicit through an RFP process or any other process to get what we're looking for. Okay. So maybe we should. You know, to approach the CPC, find out what funding so it, yeah. uh, necessary to do the requisite studies, uh, uh, wetland studies, and we know we can do. But I agree, you know, th we, that fell through the cracks a little bit. We were hoping to do something in June. Yes. Uh, working with the in collaboration with the Planning Commission. But and I think we should. Could we add that as an article, you know, to, to do the funding of that, that type of. The, I mean, obviously, we would need to know the cost of that, but I, I think we should just not let those those parts that, that the idea of offering them to, you know, as but affordable deed restricted, always affordable. I think is important for us to get moving on that. So, Mr. Wong, you had your. I think you know I had that discussion with them like a month and a half ago, and they were. I mean, it's really up to CPC to bring that forward, and. They were gun shy, which I had mentioned before, but I told them that we still want to pursue that. So I think we're waiting to hear from them to bring it forward. Okay, I, I think the town administrator. Maybe we want to bring think it forward ourselves if we, we can, but um, I'm just saying it really was CPC. It would be nice if we could collaborate on it. Yeah, but I mean, that's what we, I, we literally invited them to do right. when we were sitting. We, we, we welcomed the discussion and we asked yeah. them to come down and talk to us about that and assess for you all units. Yeah, yeah, that's the other. That was the well, other thing, still right? The bylaw. The bylaw yeah. Yeah. However, they, they, it it appeared to me that you know, though it was first rolled out to us there, mm -hmm. that it appeared to me that there was an awful lot of work that had been done to look at those three, and they were approached. They were approached by Habitat for yes. Humanity for those three. But we should at least push that forward because to me it, it appeared to me that there was an overall agreement by um, the members of the town town meeting members attending that we want more affordable housing that's on our strategic plan it just was a disagreement in terms of the lots and we were disconnected in terms of what information we all knew about it but what mr. O'Leary now that you're mentioning it he's he's right we there was a whole dialogue about how are you going to put a house on something that's all wetlands and how is that going to Im impact the abutting lots? So there was a whole question of that that made us reconsider yeah, our. And again, this is land that we already own. We've right. been approached by you know a developer of Habitat for Humanity. And we may be able to do something more than what they're offering yeah. to do, uh, but we don't know that until the, the wetland studies we are done. So we need to know what we have, what can we do on it, yeah. and then. Solicit, you know, through an RFP process or with Habitat Humanity, and, right. and get it done. And I, I think, you know, what was lost a little bit was that there was near unanimity yes. as far as the effort that was being made and to get it done. It was just a question of who should do what first and who should be doing what. And the process. Our board, our board thought, you know, we should be taking the initiative to find out exactly what we have, to find out what we can do, and then right. support their effort to build some more affordable housing. So. Uh, so I think we're all on the same page, yeah. other than the whether we're going to spend our own money, the town's money, to find out what we can do with our own land, or we're going to rely on developers, you know, and their yeah. consultants to do it. And there was some hesitation on some of our parts to say, you know, why don't we know what we have and what we can do? So yeah. let's just determine that and then yeah. put it into our plan. So are we in agreement that maybe just to forward that? I th that's what I would think should be on there. I would love to add the. I would love the to add the accessory dwelling unit, but we, but we don't it. even we yeah. haven't even seen that yet. Yeah. No, but they're they're still in discussion. But if the, okay. the, I think it's a good idea just to put the placeholder on here for, the, for the appropriate the money to get the study the uh, yes, yeah. wetlands delineations done, so we can determine what we can do. The town administrator can talk with the planner sure. and sure. see if the planning commission is willing to move forward now on it, or do they want us to wait? 
get a sense of what that would cost, at least at sure. least for the, the the three lots that were under consideration. There were three, right? Or were there three four? Four. four? Four. I think there were four. four. But one, I think. One, one would put on Main Street. One's on Main Street, uh, St. Teresa Street. Uh, St. Teresa Street because we're talking about potential you know, pump station sites and stuff yes, like that. And right. there's another one over from Mount's Pond and everything. So Haverhill Street. But the Haverhill yeah. Street, Street was a Oak Hill Road. Well, yeah. the Haverhill okay. Street, the concern was how much density were you going to put on that lot right. because people, mm. the street behind them were very concerned right. for right. wetlands disturbances. And then there was one okay. by Swamp Pond or something. Not, not in Swamp Pond, but around that. It was kind of in the back there. One up on Oak Hill Road extension. Yeah, yeah, that was it. That was it. That's so the third one. But I thought there was a fourth one too. But whatever it is, yes. you know, we should just yeah. get the determinations made. Yeah. And I don't know why I'm thinking the Haver one. Somebody else already started development on their own. I thought mm -hmm. I heard that. No. They can't. No, it's just town owned. We got that in the <laughs> land swap yeah. from yeah. Reading Municipal Light. Or was it in the same area? I don't no, but no, I there were there you. were yeah, I'll discuss yeah. it. there were abutters raising the yeah. concerns of development and how that would Im it's wetlands and there were d there were neighbors in the vicinity concerned about the issues relating to the d dangerousness of the road and right. you know right. traffic calming and adding more adding more traffic to that already busy road. So, so, so could be, we, you know, well, a dozen units and whatever it was. But so yeah. Since we're talking about town property, anything on Carpenter? Because that's kind of going to stop right, in that kind of whole development area. Is there anything we need to do there to get it to the next level? Um, you know, I talked with the planner and I know that there's some review of how, how it might be able to be developed and potentially not require secondary access and that's something that we've been looking at because there's a lot of concern from the parsonage neighborhood with any secondary access but uh, I think those conversations are still ongoing okay. um, so I don't think it's a funding issue at this point with that okay. project all right. all right okay oh are we all set with the review Mr. Gilberto no thank you for the feedback and we will delete article 10 that's there it should not have been on there and we will create a new standalone article for uh, funding what looks like so there's only there will only be 13. Right now, They'll be out of there by 8:30. Well, I was thinking <laughs> 15 was easily divisible by five, but you know maybe maybe Vincenzo won't. You know maybe Vincenzo. I don't. Know. All right. So now there'll be there'll be there'll be 14. You're right. Okay. All right. So our next order of business is the appointments for the Capital Improvement Planning Committee. Nope. No strategic plan. Oh yes. Oh. Re re reviewing it. Sorry. Strategic plan. Approved. The next order of business is to review and approve the strategic plan for 2023 and beyond. And we we had um, met to update this, and so you incorporated it into the package with the changes. This is also available on on. Um, our website. It will be available on website. It's not it on there right It will now. be available, but you just wanted us to see the changes. <laughs> I just want to show you the changes because I know there was, okay. um, you know, for the public, I think everyone who has been following knows the board conducted two meetings um, and, and put in um, easily seven or eight hours uh, into the, uh, the plan and updating the plan. Um, some of the feedback was not only to incorporate the new things, but maybe clean up the formatting a little bit, which I've tried to do here. Uh, in this draft without taking anything out. So I'll go through it really quickly. Vision statement was unchanged. The vision statement was also unchanged. Progress, so this is where I started to monkey with it a bit. So this slide shows progress uh, for things that are ongoing. Um, and the things that were uh, added to it are in red on here. So there's a number of things that the board added um, at its uh, discussion. And then I created a second progress achieved slide, sort of to separate the two. So these are things for which we've been working on it, and we've made some progress, and these are things for which we sort of have worked through and are now, um, not maybe not on the back burner, but are not being actively worked on for a variety of reasons. So that's sort of the difference between these two slides. Um, and again, I, I'm not gonna go through every item that was added, because you all right. know what was added. But for the public, this will be posted on the website, and you'll be able to check it out. Um, for the objectives, the board's feedback was to try to divide up 
better by subject matter. So this is uh, one of five sections that I called it leadership and vision. So sort of very general things that didn't fit me in one of the four um, divisions of the administration under the charter, the four divisions being finance, public works, public services, and public safety. So I either didn't fall in those four categories, went here. Um, so then we get into the four categories, um, and again, the new items are in red. So we have public works, um, and finance, um, and then we went into public services um, and, uh, and public safety as well. Um, public services is one that's been active uh, in recent years. We've added things to it, although not necessarily in the, um, the most recent, um, the recent round. Um, but I, I think I've got the, all of the update on there. Well, you're going to have to update become a Purple Heart community because we, we are. We I, I would just note, so I did not take anything off for which we, we, we accomplished yeah. afterwards, but we did accomplish that, yes. yes. There were a couple other things in there, too, that we did accomplish, so. But I didn't, I didn't want to mess with what the board had already done. What about um, exploring compensation for the select board? There's some there's some there's some there's some there's there's some there's some yeah. yeah. I, I saw it, but I don't remember what it was. Okay. Retroactive for Mr. O'Leary. Retroactive for Mr. O'Leary. <laughs> we can't afford that. And then I'll retire. We can't afford that. It's on here. Um, but yeah, I'll, it's on. I saw it. I'll add it to the objective slide, though, just to make sure it sticks right out as something that we have yeah. as a priority. Um, well, you could always adjust the budget on Article 7. <laughs> uh, and then the that doesn't that require a charter to would that require a charter change are we all the elected members I'd have to review I looked at this last time it came up but I just right. don't remember the answer right um, without compensation all the elected members right yeah I'd have, I'd have to double check but there, there may be a restriction yeah. there yeah. Um, I did not change the core values because the board did not change them in this uh, SWOTT SWAT active exercise we didn't change anything so I'm not going to go through the rest of that. Um, so I've tried to clean it up a little bit to reflect everything that was done. I appreciate all your feedback um, at those two meetings. And I have prepared a motion to uh, adopt this if the board so chooses. Perfect. And get it up on the website. Yeah, that looks great. You did a great job Thank cleaning you. up the... It's all your work. I just... It's great. All right. Any questions? No. We're good. Do we have a vote? Motion. Yes, Madam Chair, I move to approve the strategic plan for 2023 and beyond. Second. Motion by Mr. Walner, second by Mr. O'Leary. Any further discussion? All those in favor? Aye. 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 Now it's appointments to CIPC. Do we have a motion? I'm sorry. Is that a Next yeah, order of business. Oh, yeah. Okay. Yep. Madam Chair, I move to place the nomination of following names for appointment re uh, reappointment to the Capital Improvement Plan. Catherine Manapelli to expire May 2nd, 2023. Abigail Herba to expire June 30, 2023. Donald Kelleher to expire June 30, 2023. Elizabeth Ward to expire June 30, 2023. Jeffrey Friedman to expire May 2nd, 2023. Michael Connolly to expire June 20, 2023. Joe Foti, Joseph Foti to expire June 30th, 2023. And Vincenzo Studo to expire May 2nd, 2023. Second. Motion by Mr. Walner, second by Mr. O'Leary. Isn't is this a name roll call? It is. Oh. Sorry. Well, you don't have so to say the terms. You can just say the. What I know. <laughs> I'll, I'll pass it down. Yeah. <laughs> uh, well, or just what page is it in our? Uh, I page guess, eight is page the motion. <laughs> I should have thought might be eight. Eight. Oh, eight. Okay. Yeah, I did see it in there. I just. Okay, and thank you, Mr. Gilberto, for getting to this right away. Mr. Kelleher reminded us that we need to make these um, appointments again, so thank you. All right, any discussion? We have a motion by Mr. Walner, a second by Mr. O'Leary. It's a roll name, roll call vote. Mr. O'Leary. Catherine Manipelli, you're welcome. Uh, Abigail Herbert. Donald Kelleher. Elizabeth Roth, Jeffrey Friedman, Michael Conley, Joseph Foti, and Vincenzo Studo. Mr. Walner. Catherine Manapelli, Abigail Herbert, John Kelleher, Elizabeth Ward, Jeffrey Friedman, Michael Connolly, Joseph Foti, Vincenzo Studo. 
Mrs. Gonzalez. Catherine Pelly, Abigail Herbert, Donald Kelleher, Elizabeth Rourke, Jeffrey Friedman, Michael Conley, Joseph Foti, and Vincenzo Studio. Okay, and Manupelli is Catherine Manupelli, Abigail Hurlbut, Donald Kelleher, Elizabeth Rourke, Jeffrey Friedman, Michael Connolly, Joseph Fodi, and Vincenzo Studo. Okay, our next order of business is legal bills. Mr. Walner. Madam Chair, I move to approve legal bills for Furman Gregory Tula in the amount of $3,829.01 for Judicial Arbitration and Mediation Services Incorporated for mediation on the secondary school building project. Second. Motion by Mr. Walmer, second by Mr. O'Leary. Any further discussion? Hearing none, all those in favor? Aye. Aye. That's the only legal bill, right, Mr. Walmer? That's, that's all in I the see. packet? Okay. Next order of business is the review of and approval of meeting minutes. And. Uh -huh. Madam Chair, I would like to ask if we could um, go six. Technically, I, I, I didn't get to review them. So, Pat, Pat, pass or over. not pass over, but table it until the. Table it, please. That's the word. So we have a further review of it. Okay. All right. <laughs> so we'll we'll hang on to those until. Whoa. Well, they did. They did come in the. They were a lot off. A lot of them. I tried to quickly review them yeah, today. Yeah, time. But uh, uh, it, it, it. It was a lot there. Right. <laughs> okay. We, we are catching up. Where we have that's about a third of the backlog that we're yes. working through. So the next couple yeah. meetings, you'll see more. Great. Yeah, that's great. All right. So we'll. So keep keep them coming, and okay. I think if you. <coughs> I think it would help if when they're done, if you uploaded them into the share folder, then we, we don't have to look at them right before the meeting. We can yeah. just look at them and make some recommended if, so they need, if they need modifications. So we'll create a draft meeting minutes folder in share files. So you, can, you can find them in there. Okay. That's where I'm yeah. Thank you. We should talk about making sure that it uploads because there was an issue. All good. right. Our next order of business is the town administrator's report. Thank you, Madam Chair. I'll be very brief. You heard the, uh, the good news regarding Ms. Uh, Mrs. Conley. Um, she uh, had been the executive administrative assistant in the office for, um, for a while, having filled in as a town clerk. And um, Ms. Uh, Duplin um, has uh, evaluated her and recommended uh, and appointed her to be the uh, assistant town clerk, which is a statutory position. And we're really happy about that and look forward to the continued um, working relationship uh, in the office, uh, including um, Ms. Uh, Ducro as well. Um, I just will note, and I, I made a similar comment <coughs> to this um, at the uh, Land Utilization Committee meeting in either late June or early July, um, you know, we conducted a rail trail feasibility study, um, and I, I know that there's a lot of questions that have come out of it, but one thing that also did come out of it is our feasibility study was submitted to the state and the uh, state accepted it, and they did actually acknowledge that uh, our project uh, would be eligible for federal funding um, you know, once we're ready with a design and a route to proceed with. So the next step really is for the town to advance that design, um, which the Land Utilization Committee has been working on. Um, at the same meeting, I provided this update um, in the process, which again was not unanticipated, um, al although the timing of the notice was sort of surprising to some. Um, because within days of being told we were not getting grant funding to continue planning, we were told we were eligible for construction funding at some point in the future. Um, but what I also want the community to hear in this forum is the Land Utilization Committee has recognized there's a lot of work to be done still with regard to the route, um, and so they had actually taken a vote not to request funding at the October town meeting um, for the rail tra trail while they work on that um, in the background um, with uh, you know, all, all of the stakeholders. I, I just would note, you know, again, um, for those who may see this project shows up on a list now, that's the reason why. Um, you know, we were expecting that that was going to happen when the report was submitted. I didn't expect it to happen so quickly, but it did happen quickly. Um, but our project doesn't go any further until we actually um, move forward with the design, which the LUC is um, not prepared to recommend requesting funding for yet. A um, couple of other notes. Um, we, we did run into uh, uh, an issue with regard to um, culverts on Chestnut Street, kind of near the Public Works Department. Madam Chair, I know you're well aware of that. Um, you know, it's going to require a replacement uh, uh, and repair there um, that will not be uh, uh, insubstantial. 
Um, we went through something very similar with Park Street, although this won't be maybe uh, quite as involved. But I'm, I'm just flagging it because we're going to have to make the repair. Um, we do have funding in place through, through a town road repair appropriation that we ordinarily are reserving for uh, pavement management plans, so paving or repaving the roads. We're going to have to dip into that um, to be able to make this repair to keep the road safe and, pa and passable, which means we'll need to uh, you know, request additional funding to keep up with the pavement management plan at a future town meeting. I don't know that it will be October, it might be in June, uh, but whenever we're deviating from what we're planning to use those funds for, I try to let the board know um, this is something we need to do. We need to make this repair to keep the road passable. We had a pothole open up that the chair identified uh, or was reported to. <laughs> um, was it three weeks ago now, Madam Chair, that that, that came up? Um, yeah. <coughs> no. No. Last weekend. Last weekend? Yeah, it was last weekend. You're right. Yes. I, I apologize. Yes. So uh, anyway, um, yeah. DPW jumped right on it, but I just want to make folks aware that it's going to be, uh, uh, you know, some interruption on the road and we're going to need to make the repair. Should be just in relation to the dipping into one fund to take mm -hmm. care of this problem. Mm -hmm. Why wouldn't we replenish that in October so that we don't lose a season or two I, I, th I think that's our maintenance program. I think that's my hope. Um, you know, we'll, we'll want to talk with the Capital Improvement Management Committee, um, our, uh, the Capital Improvement Planning Committee with regard to that, but hopefully we can do that this yeah, fall. I mean, I'd like to see it at the October town meeting, whether it be Article 7. You know, yeah, the, the capital article, yeah. Or the capital, whatever it's going to be. Um, I don't want to see our, our road no. program slip any more than it already slips. Uh, it's costly. We have a lot of territory to cover, and unforeseen expenses like this come up. But I think if we have some free cash and other resources to to handle it, we should supplement it. So we'll look to do that with a recommendation. I, that's my question. I, I had a I had a specifically had a question that wasn't related to that because I didn't re recognize how serious the issue was until Chief Stats <laughs> explained it. But one of my questions to follow up with you on anyway had to do with the intersection improvements and the CIPC did approve and we did approve at the town meeting. We did and the, the, the town did approve at the town meeting the, the four intersections. We saw the study in Chestnut and Park was one of those and it's quite close to that. Mm -hmm. So CIPC did put funds to have that done. And that's a long time now that nothing has taken place, but we already sort of had funds for, for traffic calming and, and, and traffic signals and things and improvements to that location that, I mean, why not do it all at once? And we did already approve funds to be, to be um, used through CIPC for, for, for roadway improvements and safety improvements. And uh, th we did that for four different intersections, but that one was the one that took priority. And I, I did want to ask you, what, what, is, what is the delay on that? What is taking so long for that to <coughs> have been done? It's nothing does appear to even have been w done. Which, which intersection are you uh, asking there about, were, um, We were, we had met with the, t the engineer and we looked at the study, there were the intersection of Chestnut and Park Street, um, mm -hmm. there were proposed tr uh, traffic signal there mm -hmm. to calm the traffic down at that intersection, which the Chief, Chief Murphy told us was the intersection that had a lot of incidents, put incidents no, Park there. Park at Central, not Park at Chestnut. Yeah, there were both? No, Chestnut both. and Park. It was, it was Park, uh, park no, it was Park and, Park and, Chestnut was the one that they were going to look at first. Mm, no, it, that wasn't one of the intersections. It was. No, it that was wasn't one of the intersections. Yes, but it I, was. No, it was Park. Yeah. It was Park and Central. It was Havel Street and Chestnut Street. That was the first. You know, Havel the, Street, Chestnut the Street, one. and then it was uh, Southwick, Havel, Southwick Havel, Road, Havel, Park Hunter. Street, okay. Concord Street. Street. Yeah. And then uh, uh, North and Central. And then North and Central. I didn't think. I didn't no, those were the four. Those were the four. Yeah. North and Central, I, I, I Park and Central, Havel Street and Chestnut, and then the Southwick, Concord, Park Street. Those were the four. It wasn't... Uh, uh, but did uh, we appropriate funds for that? Yeah. We did for Havel right. and Chestnut. Havel and Chestnut. And then, that was the, and then the other two that were going to come okay. afterwards. Okay. 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 But they were like also the traffic calming. The engineer told us, I know it was that intersection, 
that they were going to implement some traffic calming measures as well to make to render those safe and, and he, he's my, my clear recollection is that that was chestnut and park that he was talking about because i remember saying you need to address someone's going to get really hurt at you know crossing crossing central and central and, and park from Ipswich River and it's well used and we talked about well if you did if they took care of that at at Chestnut and Park it would calm the traffic down as you know before it approaches the next intersection which they said didn't have as many incidences of accidents right. there but um, you know they could at least put some calming measures in place you know more signage more slow down more crosswalks more you know visible things in the roadway to render it more safe for you but know you cyclists and pedestrians the team talked about changing the cycle of the light too on each end the, right? the, the school and you know, the only problem with the, the school one is triggered by the driveway so that that's why it's on us um, never in sync so the other one i think he said he could try he was going to try to adjust but the one at the high school oh. entryway is the one that doesn't help the situation at all because it's the whenever today when the schools are dead, when a car is coming down the driveway, it, it triggers yeah. it stops 62. But well, I what I <coughs> why I bring it up to you to add, inquire about it is just like we don't want that, and they do the they do certain roads. They have the schedule of roads ready to to be you you know to be improved, and they've been doing that and keeping to that for ever since I've been on the board they've been keeping to that and making sure that keeps going like Mr. O'Leary said we don't want to let that go if we need to borrow some money what uh, what road is it going to get taken care of but those really we studied those intersections because they were unsafe and yeah. we really it's a really we need to see that we need to see that be taken care of and I don't know and CIPC did fund it was one that they wanted to start with. Yeah, the table street. Which is yeah, so what is going, and then the engineer said they were already going to start calming measures and other signage on the other ones that were of concern that had been studied that not necessarily put a traffic signal, but at least put some calming measures there that were recommended in the study. I don't want us to forget this. We study these things, we get these report yeah. back, it takes umpteen months and weeks and years, and, and then it gets put on the shelf. So I'm just going to keep bringing it up to see that we, we have to do something about these. They're not safe intersections. And there are people getting into car accidents. There's people trying to cross there with their dogs or their bicycles or just their children. We have to do more to outline crosswalks, put signs. Put a blinking light, slow down. I mean, we, there's a light on Central measuring people's speed. Put a put some blinking light or something on on Park until they can get these things. Do more. We have to put more into effect. And I do recall that study recommended certain things that could be done that our engineer said could he would work on. And I know we had a shift in personnel unexpectedly, but. Um, we really have to keep that on the front burner too, just like we have all these other things we're talking about, keeping on the front burner. So I'm hoping to, it, that if we can get a report on when that's going to take place, because that was approved, I think, back in, in um, June. I think? So it was June. June. Was it the June meeting or the one before that? So there's a few yeah. things at work here. So there, there's, a, there's, a, there's a separate appropriation for the Haverhill and Chestnut right. Street intersection for which we have a designer working on a, a major right. redesign. Right. So that, that's one that's very recent, June of this year. Okay. But then going back, I think 18 months, Madam Chair, you're, you're talking about maybe 12 Stop. months. There was a study that was done. They came right. in and made a presentation, and the, the engineer had identified that there are short-term things that we can do, and much of it involved new signage and restriping. And I, I know signage went in, at least at Park and Central, because I see it often. Um, I, I don't remember the timing of when the restriping happened, but we'll get you a report with regard to okay, exactly what was done. Good. And I will check on Chestnut and, and, and Park. I remember the conversation about sequencing the light at Winter in Park right. yeah. um, and what would happen if you added a light at 
Park and Central. I remember that conversation, but I need yeah. to check on Chestnut and Park. Right, because we talked an exorbitant amount about that and, mm -hmm. and how it couldn't be closed as a one-way because mm -hmm. trucks utilize it. It couldn't be, you know, there was, it, there was a lot of talk. We focused on Park and, park and Chestnut a lot. Mm -hmm. I will follow uh, up on that, though. Yeah, just to, so we keep that on the forefront because that's, those are well-traveled roads and we did study it and we want to see what was in the study at least come to fruition mm -hmm. I would, or what was recommended as a result of those studies. I'm sorry, Mr. Gilbert, were you finished with your report now that we... No, I asked him, I interrupted him. <laughs> <laughs> I thought you might be done, so that's why I was no, talking about... I interrupted about him about the, yeah. yeah. Funding the, the road maintenance. Okay. Oh, that's right. That's what, <laughs> what interrupted his report. And um, then we got out to chest. I, I am finished, though. <laughs> <laughs> you finished, and now you have an extra assignment there to get us updated on that. All right. So let's do old and new business as well as member board member reports all together. Mr. O'Leary. Uh, again, just congratulations to Mr. Chu, uh, Mr. Studo, and his family, official Very family exciting. member. Beautiful little girl. Nice to see the picture. And, and Vincenzo looked fine. He didn't show a picture of his wife. <laughs> I'm sure she was tired <laughs> and weary. But uh, no, congratulations to Vincenzo and his family. Uh, the only other thing, just a question on Mill Street. Where do we stand? Oh, and then I'm yes, done. Yes. Yes. Uh, I have to check with Mr. Clark. I, I know he's been working with the engineer with regard to uh, the, the layout. And I, I know it's an item that he and Mr. Parisi have talked about completing before he leaves. Um, we may have a little bit more time for Mr. Clark uh, from the November date we were talking about, so hopefully that will <laughs> help us. Um, but uh, I will check with them. I, I, I don't have an update right now. I'd have to check with them. Uh, again, the market is changing. Mm -hmm. Yeah. That's all. Thank okay. you. Mr. Walner? Right. Uh, yeah, about a Sunday or two ago, uh, Steve and I were at the Black and Brown Market. First time we had that in town. Was well received. Um, we had a number of people there. The vendors were very pleased with the reception they received, and so it was a good event. <coughs> it was all around good, so it was nice to see you. It was nice to be there. It was great, great event. Like that. So good for us to do that. I'm holding up a lot of people. I I got to get my RFP done for the Forest Committee. I got to get some marketing done for the Tax Aid Committee. Um, um, Transportation Committee, I gotta write that up so we can review that. Martin's Pond is looking for me to do things. Energy Conservation, I wanna write up for Leanne so she can bring that to her group. And then I had mentioned uh, back in our first strategic meeting about potentially coming up with a volunteer committee. And I remember you had commented, okay, that's a little bit too far for me. And then I don't know if you saw the Reading Magazine, but in there, Reading Cares is their volunteer committee. So this is this is something we should I, I will put together and we should really explore because there is a need for that. And the Reading Care Committee has been doing this for fifteen years and they've had great success with it. So I'll add that on my list. Welcome to Zoom. Okay. Enter your meeting ID you, followed by pound. Mrs. Gonzalez. Um, uh, I would also love to congratulate Mr. Studo on Mariella Victoria Studo. Enter your participant ID followed by pound. Uh, and Otherwise, you are in the meeting now. There are four participants in the meeting. You are muted. You can mute or unmute yourself by pressing star six. You have been added to the... You are un... Um, and the community impact team had national night out on Just Tuesday, August 2nd. And I, unfortunately, was out of town, so I didn't get to attend. But from what I read, it was a great success. So you were down there. We were there. We had a good time there. That was very nice. <laughs> so it sounds like it was a, a fun night and yeah. success. Mr. Gilberto night. was there with a couple of his boys. Mm -hmm. He was in the bouncy house. No, he was <laughs> near the bouncy house. <laughs> yeah, I'm sorry I had him miss it. It was a nice night, too. Yeah, it was, it was yeah. 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 Police department had the new hybrid vehicle there, and mm -hmm. kids getting it out, people asking questions about it. Fire department had a great display. Senior center, everybody it was great. Good health, good. And, and the police department does a great job flipping burgers. Yeah. So. 
I, I may, and you all said, I may have a police officer, one of my kids. He was quite impressed with the canine dog. Oh. Thinking about that, as I'm saying. Absolutely. So, yeah, they were. He went and he had a blast. My youngest went and he had a blast there with his friends. So that was good because he's a teenager. So, <laughs> you know. Um, and I just wanted to say congratulations to Jillian and Vincenzo on their baby, and hope they have many, many years of fun and amazement and excitement mm -hmm. and and sleep. I hope she's a scheduled. She's a scheduled girl right away and gets into a sleep schedule so they can get some, some rest, but hope they're having a lot of fun and enjoying the baby. Okay. Just to interrupt you, I forgot to mention, she was born on my daughter's birthday. So Aww. God bless them. <laughs> she turned out great, but... <laughs> oh, I guess <laughs> the baby. Those little Leos, they'll give you a run yes. for money. Yes. <laughs> yeah. All right, so <laughs> and that's about it. Um, yes, and all the other stuff we've already talked about. So I think it'd be good a good point to ask for a motion to adjourn. Uh, yep. Madam Chair, through you, I, I do have a hand up from Ms. Doherty. I think it was oh. because the audio cut out, but I'm just going to ask. Oh, sure. Um, oh, I didn't see it. I'm sorry. Yeah, I see. Okay, your hand is down. So we're good. <coughs> Welcome. Did you have a question or? She, she no. I think it was... Uh, the issue with the audio, which we... Well, she was letting us know. We interrupted the board members to fix, so sorry, <laughs> sorry. about that. No, I'm sorry. I should have. Okay. okay. Madam Everybody's Chair. sorry. <laughs> Madam Chair, move to adjourn. A second. Motion by Mr. Walner, second by Mr. O'Leary. All those in favor? Aye. Aye. Okay.